is six o'clock, January 30th, 2017. I'd like to start the New Fane Select Board meeting. Welcome everybody here at VCTV, folks that are sitting out there and the board. Um, before I get going, do we have any things you guys want to add to the agenda? Yes, um, I'd like to add. Let's see what I got to um, uh, we, we need to, uh, we, had, we did get a letter from the treasurer and um, regarding tra uh, training and I think I would like to add it to basically discuss it briefly and perhaps uh, on the schedule members of the public. That's right. Okay. Is it possible? Uh, I mean, do we need to discuss this tonight, well, given that we have so many things on it already? And uh, I, I think it could be a brief discussion, and if not nothing else, then to schedule it for another time. Yeah, we I would, would want, like to schedule it. We would it. want Maureen to be in the meeting. Yes, that's, that's what right. I want. I that's would right. like to have Maureen here. But we, in order to say that and to have, it be vote, have us agree on it, it needs to be brought up. So you're making that a motion? Can I can do that, that now? Sure. Oh, all right. To add that to the to the work to the agenda. Second. Uh, the motion's been made, him. seconded to add the treasurer's letter to the agenda under unscheduled members of the public. Is there any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, aye. To aye. Opposed <laughs> or abstaining. The ayes have it. Is there anything else that needs to be added to the agenda for the meeting? If Everyone well, the three of us are here about the um, solid waste amendment, uh, rather, uh, article. Yep. I was wondering if you could That's in the Yeah, it's under Bob's benches on the right underneath the road business, so it shouldn't be very oh, long. Oh, okay, great. So. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. First order of business is to either approve or disapprove the December 19, 2016 regular minutes. Make a motion to approve them. I second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the minutes of December 19, 2016. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed or abstaining. The next order would be the December 27, 2016 budget meeting. Anybody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. A second. Motion's been made and seconded to approve the December 27, 2016 budget meeting minutes. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed or aye. abstaining? Uh, January 9th, 2017 budget meeting minutes. What's I'll make pleasure? a motion to accept the Budget meeting minutes of January 9th. Second. Second. Motions are made and seconded to approve the January 9th, 2017 budget minute minutes. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed aye. or abstaining? The ayes have it. January 13th minutes, 2017. I make a motion to accept the budget meeting minutes of January 13th. Is there a second? Motion's been made and seconded to approve the January 13, 2017 budget minutes from the budget meeting. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, opposed or abstaining? The ayes have it. Next item on the agenda is the Road Forms Road Commissioner's Report. Uh, the roads overall are in good shape. River Road has a lot of potholes and it's very hard to drive on that. There's so many potholes. We did try to take the grader to it the other day to smooth that's what we could of it. It's a little bit better, but until it really thaws out, we won't be able to do a lot with it. The rest of the roads are in pretty good shape. The crew's, been, the crew's done an excellent job on the roads um, and keeping up with all the storms. They put a lot of overtime in this year. We are going to be over budget on sand, salt, in overtime unless the storm stops, but the crew has done, I think the crew has done a really, really good job. As far as the equipment goes, the last snowstorm we had, I'm not sure what the date was, but the other day, 
um, the 2014 Mac plow dug into the soft gravel and when it did so it bent the plow frame on the truck and the push plate on the plow. We filed the claim with VLCT, they sent an adjuster down to look at it. It's gone to Tenco where it was built to be repaired. Um, that estimate was like $1,400 and there's $500 deductible. Um, it will be, should be done tomorrow or the next day. The 2013 Mac needs to go to state line. It has an idler pulley problem. An idler pulley is what keeps the belts from squealing. And it's not keeping tension on the belts, so they're squawking all the time. The 09 Sterling had a brake issue. We've had that repaired. The new truck, the new truck that this board ordered is finally here. Came in last week. We've used it for several storms with no problems. The 06 Sterling was traded into McDivitt. Trucks over in uh, Manchester, New Hampshire, and Shannon has dropped the insurance on that truck. Winter sand, we'll have to have, actually Mike just started, or Fitzpatrick just started today delivering more sand, but we're getting more sand. Uh, we've used a lot of sand because of so many ice storms. Most of our storms this winter have been ice. Um, River Road Bridge Project, I have not heard anything from VTrans or Wyndham Regional about the bridge. I have called Mark Pickering a couple times, but have not heard back yet. I'll call him again. I was told by somebody who works at Green Mountain Power, but he didn't really want his name used, that the town should apply or call Green Mountain Power and request that the street lights be fixed and all of them be replaced with a more modern LED light. Um, from what he said, they'll do it for nothing. Um, and if the, if the select board doesn't want to do it, then the village should definitely do it. Uh, it burns far less electricity. Um, Plus, it'd be nice to see the, all the lights working. Half of them don't work now. So, um, As far as the town garage goes, I've had Champion Overhead Door there come replace two of the lower panels and service the overhead doors. I usually have them serviced every year. Kevin Mowry is going to replace the outside lights with modern LED light fixtures there. Vermont Efficiency will rebate the uh, each light by $100, so it cuts the light, cost of the light down quite a bit. And from what I understand, the energy savings would pay for the lights over a period of time. Three out of the four lights on the building no longer work, and it's hard to get around the garage at night when it's dark like that. So he's got stuff ordered, and we'll get that fixed as soon as he can. That is all I have. Is there any discussion on the road foreman's road commissioner's report? On the street lamps. Yeah. Um, there was an article out not too long ago about that the first generation street, street lamps that are the bluer color are being replaced pretty much nationwide because of uh, complaints from neighbors because the blue shift in the light is very annoying. So we want to make sure that if Green Mountain is going to put in new lights, they do something that's in the warmer range so that we don't get complaints from neighbors. Yep. Absolutely. I'm not sure if the town should be requesting it or the village trustees anyways. The village. Because most of the lights are in the village, so. It, is, it always has been a village um, subject for the last many years. So do you want to bring it up before the village trustees? Yeah, we could do that. All right, why don't we do it that way? And then if they don't want to do it, we can look into it further. So we can test them out on the pool in front of Marion. And if she doesn't get <laughs> agitated, then we know it's the right color. <laughs> you making that a motion? <laughs> well, that's in the village. I'm not in the village. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. You're not. Actually, that's a good point, Gary. Because uh, those blue LED lights are very annoying. Well, Barry's going to bring it up before the Newfane Village, whatever they are. Okay. <laughs> the incorporated village oh. of Newfane. I had a question about the cost of the uh, lights. The um, ones at the garage. Yeah. It's going to be like nineteen hundred dollars for six lights. I think it is plus the one over the fuel pump. And then you get your hundred dollars per light back after, after after it's installed. Okay, so that's the nineteen hundred dollars times six, uh, or nineteen hundred dollars is. Um, Cost about twelve hundred bucks. Yeah. Before installation. Can't hear you. Oh, before installation. Nineteen hundred includes the installation. Includes it. Okay, thank you. Yep. 
then you get the if it's six lights, you get six hundred dollars back on that. So it makes it pretty good. The ones that are over there now, I think, are sodium vapor, and they're very expensive to replace the bulbs. They don't last very long either. So. Anybody got anything else? So, Todd, uh, short of the uh, tonight, uh, as of tomorrow, you'll have enough inventory to uh, handle any road conditions. Oh yeah. Okay, good. We're only down one truck, so once that truck comes back, we'll, we'll all be up and running again. So. Good. Yep. Yeah. Anybody got anything else? Do you want to make a motion to accept it? I make a motion to accept the road foreman's and road commissioner's report. Is there a second? second. Motion's been made and seconded to approve the road foreman's road commissioner's report. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed aye. or abstaining? I'm abstaining. So it's four ayes and one abstaining. All right, scheduled members of the public. Bob Spencer. The floor is yours. Window and solid waste management discussion. How are you doing, Tom? Good. Um, I'm here with Johanna, your representative on our board of supervisors. Shannon is also the alternate, I believe, but mm -hmm. she typically doesn't come. But <clears throat> um, I'm here really to sort of help you answer, uh, hopefully answer some questions and explore some alternatives because as you all have heard, the, the board of supervisors voted at our, uh, I think it was our November meeting, or December, December. meeting, to close our 23-year-old material recycling facility. Basically, that um, was due to Brattleboro's um, desire to switch to the single stream collection, curbside single stream. They were offered uh, significantly less cost per year by their contract hauler to go single stream um, and they 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 want to do that and without their tons coming into the facility which is about 20 percent mm -hmm. and our fixed costs it's been determined that it's probably not cost effective to keep running that's still up for discussion it isn't it, uh, you know, there are some uh, we could talk a little bit about there are towns that would like to further evaluate that. But um, I'm here to, to basically help us move on to the next step. Um, until the board changes their mind, I'm not out advocating any particular approach. Um, it is um, painful to you know lose a facility and lay off employees, and, um, but we've all been through that, I'm sure, in our, our careers and our towns. So, um, so Johanna had looked into and I had sent out a memo to all the towns. The, the towns, of course, have the right to keep offering recycling, but it would be at a town expense. By us passing a, a budget with no MRF operating, we were able to reduce the, our annual assessment to the towns. The, and I have all that budget information, and I know you've all seen it. Um, and that reduction doesn't really benefit the towns as much in the first year because there's a, a one-time closing cost to close the facility, give our employees a one-month one month retention bonus if they stay because otherwise I'm not going to have anyone to sort, um, and then to mothball the facility. And By the second year the savings should be more noticeable to the towns, but there's still a significant savings. However, if a town elects to contract for private hauling of recyclables and, and, and get hauling and it, it could almost offset those savings because it's what, what I'm calling it's a cost shift. We've simply taken a public sector uh, function that you pay through an assessment and now transferring it to, a, to the, the town budget. So Johanna, you, and I think you've discussed this before, what the ballpark cost is, but it could be $12,000 well, a year. I mean, right now we have three bins. And he has very um, precise numbers on all this. Um, Newfane has about 133 hauls per year. Um, and that's from having three bins. So I gave you all figures last month um, that showed 
what it would cost to have one bin, um, which was, I figured it was 10 to 12,000 per year, and I'm not really sure if that, I, I don't know how accurate that is because um, there's a, a tonnage fee to process the material, and so I don't know exactly how much we, we would generate. Um, so it could be, I mean, if we wanted to have two bins, it would be twice that. If we want three bins, it would be three times that, which is how I came up with the figure that, um, that I suggested warning for the article. Um, and there are two other um, haulers who I didn't get around to calling. I'm sorry. Um, I could try to do that, but I think Bob and I agree that their prices are going to be pretty similar to what I got from Triple T. Um, <clears throat> and I, I think the only other thing I had to add was that um, I noticed, and I forwarded this to Shannon, that in the um, front porch forum, the town of Dummerston had printed out um, sort of a, a warning or an announcement to the citizens of Dummerston saying, you know, how do you, you know, they, they talk quite a bit about the MRF and about the um, about the district, um, you know, the Wyndham Solid Waste Management District, um, and they basically are, uh, you know, telling the townspeople what the situation is, and I was wondering if you all wanted to do something of that sort too, just so that people come into town meeting already having a certain amount of information, um, and I think Bob and I could, could write something up if you wanted to do that and give it to you, for you to approve, and then, and then publish it. It's the board's pleasure. What actually would you be putting on the front porch, uh, porch forum, or uh, what kinds of information would you want put, say, on the uh, town website? Do you have? Do well, you I have, have. I have the. I have copies of what it's Zeke Goodband who who wrote this, and I have copies that I brought for you, so you can see. I mean. You know, it's very specific information to Dummerston, but right. this gives you an idea of... So is it just basically informing um, the citizens or the people on the front page forum uh, of this... Uh, of the various options, you know, of the fact right. that the MRF, is, um, <clears throat> the MRF is not going to be um, processing things as far as we know, unless something changes, um, you know, just to... Like I said, I think it's better if if um, if uh, the taxpayers get to read about it first, so that when they come to town, absolutely, the meeting, that's what I was thinking. I just kind of wanted to see what kinds of uh, things you were actually going to be printing. And saying. Well, I wouldn't I wouldn't print it until I brought right. Okay, you could read that's, it that's good. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think. But I mean, I yeah. think that we would mention um, the various options for like you know that. having yeah. having bins yep. that are, are hauled by a private hauler or you know if something if something else um, is developed yep. using the MRF somehow um, you know just to figure out what the options are. Didn't we talk about this at our last meeting? As far as not if we were going to do something new, or we were saying maybe we'll just leave it as is for this year. Right. right. And then that would be not getting the word out, though. Getting the word no, out. No, I understand, oh, yeah. but I'm just we talking did. about yeah. yeah. It, to me, it's fine to do this, but I think as a board member that we, I'd like to see us not do anything. Let this go for a year so you guys, the next board, wherever it is, can study this a little bit more. Try to figure out what the best solution is going to be for Newfane. See what happens in the year. You mean with? Well, I got until August, right? Right. July yeah. July first. You mean with July the vote? 1st. You mean with the vote? Find out what the citizens are. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I you would don't. You don't have to have recycling bins. In right. Town. Absolutely. Right. We know. That. No. I, yeah. yeah. It's just. It's a just big change, and there's a lot of things to consider financially, and also how the um, townspeople feel about it. Um, and that's what Zeke Goodman was trying to do, say, okay, yeah. the bins go away, you can go down to Wyndham Solid Waste and buy a sticker right. and use their facility. Yeah. Right. You can hire a private hauler yep. right. and come to your house. Right. There are options. Yeah, right. absolutely. Right. I mean, several, a lot, a lot of the people in town um, do go to the Wyndham Waste with their sticker. Yes. 
Um, a lot of people have private haulers come to in front of their house and pick it up, and but we have to really find out what the majority of, of right, and you know, at a town meeting that's been born. Well, one of the things that I, you want to mention, I have a lot of numbers here. Um, for all the towns that have recycling uh, containers, um, those that don't have are not at a transfer station because you're not a transfer station. Right. Like Jamaica. And we'll talk about that a little bit. You had the fifth greatest tonnage per capita. Mm -hmm. And you had about 193 tons collected, spread over 1,700 people. It comes out to about 223 tons per person. Tons the, or pounds? Oh, uh, pounds. Yes, thank you. Not tons. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I think tons all the time. Anyways. Um, <laughs> This is really, I think, indicative of the, a lot of the out-of-town use that's, of your Well, bodies. that's exactly yeah. right. See, we're right here. With and that's a challenge for, for you. Exactly. It's a challenge for Marlboro. Right. It's a challenge for Putney. Um, because well, we also won't be able to use this place here because WW is buying that land, right? If that goes through. So there's, a, like you're saying, Todd, there's a lot of moving pieces here. I hate to even put it as a warning at town meeting until we figure all this stuff out. It's going to take a while to figure this out. What's going to be the best and for the town and all that, Gloria? My question is, will the bins, if we don't make a decision, they will leave on July 1st. So you'll just have people coming in who won't know what the options were. Can you hear her? Mm. So you would just kind of eat. Well, you would, you would obviously no, put a, put advertisements out. We, we would be putting a sign made up. We whatever. could put sandwich boards, and we oh, will be I, doing a public. Yeah, I realize that, but but you're right. It will be here, here one would, day, and we would have meetings and warned meetings before July first. It's just what I think. What we're saying now, it's it's too soon uh, to make a decision at this point. Is well, how we feel. I think that what what I was trying to do come up with was a plan to look forward to have some money in the budget to cover whatever we decided, but not to have a specific decision go out mm -hmm. in the town meeting, but just to say, you know, do the townspeople want to have recycling right. bins? First question. Absolutely. Do they feel like that's an important enough thing? You know, and if people at town meetings say no, well, then they go away. If they say yes, then we have to figure out how to do it. Um, and if they say yes, then obviously there needs to be yeah. some money to fund it. Um, and so I don't think that by town meeting you have to have a plan exa of exactly what's going right. to happen, but you have to foresee that there are going to be a lot of people who will be unhappy if the bins go away in July and there's no, you know, new thing coming along. Yeah, I think there will be a lot of people who will be uh, unhappy. Um, that's why we're putting the putting it on a, at a vote, actually getting information from the taxpayers. Um, I had a question for Bob. What are you hearing? I'm not, I'm not hearing. Carol, you just said we're going to put it to a vote, and that's not what I'm hearing. It's up to, we have to vote on that we tonight. We have to vote on that tonight. Right now, it's ours to decide. So you made up a vote of just the select board? Yes. For the, well, it, uh, what to put on a warning, finalize the warning for town right. meeting. I think it's kind of a hard thing to put on as a warning anyways, because we don't know what the budget is. Right. right. I mean, it's because just like, you know, I talked about too, and it's just like anything. It's, you know, it's private haulers hauling this. When this was all put out here, really what it was was a convenience for the town when the dumps shut down. You know, everybody went from the dump, and they're trying to find a way to solve some problems, so they created the recycle part of it. So people wouldn't be throwing everything, in, you know, you, when you had a guy coming around picking your garbage up, you didn't have to take your recycle too. You had these bins, which cost the town. And I said, you know, now it's, being done by private haulers because it's mandatory. They've got too much stuff to put in these places to recycle. They can't get rid of it. So the price goes up because somebody has to pay to handle it. I mean, if they're paying enough, probably them guys would keep their plant going down there, but made more money just so they could afford to keep everything up to date and going, you know? You'd, you'd switch with the times. The times are changing. And like right now, we have a lot of private haulers. I mean, I have one. It costs me $10 extra a month my recycle stuff and uh, you know I pay that out of my own pocket and I can just see this thing 
plus, and you're pretty quick right now, we're down to two and a half loads a week, according to your figures that you actually take at 130 some loads. And you know, when you came in with your price, we had it down at one load a week. And so that's off by, you know, two times as much more. And I said, the price is just gonna skyrocket because once everything but gets your hands on it, these guys aren't gonna do it no more. And he's just like you were saying too, Bob, like, um, you know, you're going to stay open, you're going to keep the guys there for another month to sort it. What happens after that month? Will they still, when they bring the recycles down there, is it people go through this stuff or you just throw it into another bin that goes right to the... No, we, we, we're going to market it and sell it. So there's a, um, and that closing cost estimate includes revenue from the product that we sort. Um, we did a lot of analysis, whether we just transfer it all out and say we're not sorting and we're done, but it was cost a lot more because now we pay a, a tipping fee it's it's in some places recycling is getting almost as expensive as trash right. and it, like Mike saying the market has dropped for these materials and if we were where we were four years ago we probably would keep the facility open because it was somewhat of a, a it could pay the bills mm -hmm. I mean, I can't imagine that that's the way things are going to be long term because these are all they're all materials is, it, that are good, usable things. And I mean, and over time, Johanna's time right. They, they it just goes like this. Like again. we've all but, seen that. I mean, I think one of the things that we as a town have to think about is where do we have the boxes? And one question that came up for me is, can they be at the town garage? And I'm getting a little bit ahead <coughs> of myself, but I'm just going to throw it out there that you know we have this problem with people dumping a lot of stuff here. Um, people driving through, you know, who aren't even residents. Well, if the boxes were over by the by the town garage, is that a possibility? Um, Just because of the way the garage is laid out, and the way we, you know, the way we go about it, to, unless you cleared out some more land somewhere, somebody would get run over or backed into or something. Well, in something that we've discussed. A couple other select boards we've discussed trying to figure out a way to where to put them, where they'd be. I mean, don't we have Safe. a bunch of acres of land over there? Yeah, it's all, there's 100 and, there's 136, I don't know. So or is it 36, I don't remember. Maybe. But it has to be gated too, right? Yeah. yeah, it has to be gated. And, you know, you get a lot of traffic on that road. When we were looking at the bridge, that, uh, talking to um, V-Trans, v -trans, um, over 9,000 uh, trips over that bridge every day. I mean, at an average. That's what, yeah, they said. 9,000? Yeah, 9,000 wow. back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Was it 9,000? I don't remember what it well, was. I don't remember. It was, maybe that's not correct, but, but it, was a, it was a lot. And you get a lot of traffic on that road. You get commuters all the way from Dover, uh, going back and forth. I mean, it's not just local town people. Yeah. It's I thought like maybe that. we could work a deal with Brookline. Yeah, where we can keep the bins over there. They but seem like they're kind of. They want to get out of it they, from what I was well, talking. Well, no, they just they're also in not sure what to, what to. I mean, I think that they would be interested if we had if we found a place and maybe sharing the costs. So, but I, you know. The biggest problem really here is the location. I think they're yeah. too visible, <laughs> and we get way too many people dumping in there. Um, well, I think one of the biggest things is we don't know what the price is. Right. I mean, if it goes up to fifty-five, sixty dollars a ton, and then you got how do you without having a tenant there? If you got Brookline involved with you, who's paying the bigger part of it? Somebody's gonna have to monitor what comes into that I thing, know. so you know That's very how much you're doing it. I mean, it's like I said, you know, there's private guys that are picking it up anyways. Well, Bob's got figures for, for that stuff too. So well, I, one thing for sure, no matter what we do, any change we make to the. Uh, recycling at town hall is going to end up with uh, trash on the side of the road or trash dumped at the, uh, the parking lot from the people who travel back and forth, the out-of-towners. Um, and that'll be something we have to be very cautious about because if, those, if they're not there, they're going to bump them someplace else and it's going to be in New Faith on the side of the road or in Dumerson on the side of the road as they head out to uh, wherever they came from. I think you're going to have that anyways. I mean, they we, they said the same thing when they started charging for it. You know, right. everybody's going to start throwing beside the road. You know, you'll have a few that do it pretty quickly. They get caught and it goes away. You know, but well, I think Michael, there's a difference between the uh, locals 
who don't like paying for it, uh, and the people who are uh, going back and forth to their condos and, and cabins up in the mountains. Laurie? Well, um, one of the... Oh, go ahead. Uh, just a question, Bob. We're, are we still paying like the twenty-two thousand if the bins go? No, the, it got reduced. It got significantly. reduced significantly. I, I can pull that out. And then, uh, yeah, because that that. And, and that's really what happened is that the towns are going to be assessed. They're going to be assessed a lot less. Less this because the service is going away. Okay, and then. Um, how does this really fit into the state mandatory recycling? I mean, we, we've got a state legislature that passed that, and so I personally get my permit down at the Wyndham Solid Waste because I'm too cheap to pay for a, somebody to come and pick my bag up every two months. Um, but when we take the material to you down at Wyndham Solid Waste, those of us who have a permit, mm -hmm. we're still going to be able to t take our recyclables there. Because where I, I need to, law requires my own personal commitment requires that I recycle. Well, the law is <coughs> specific that where there is trash disposal offered, you have to offer recycling. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference. And even in a public space, um, you have a waste paper, you yeah, yeah. can, or you need to have a recycling container. Mm -hmm. And so the transfer stations, like Jamaica and Reedsboro, Wardsboro, and who have trash for residents, they have to offer the recycling bins. Newfane, Vernon, Putney, Westminster, all those that don't have a transfer station, there's no obligation to provide a public recycling. <laughs> That's the distinction in the law. I have a question. But, but haulers, just the other part, who collect trash, have to offer recycling. I have a question. Yeah. Um, I don't think we, I don't know the answer to this, but why do we have to have these recycling bins available 24 hours a day, seven days a week? Why can't we have hours with maybe a gate, like, and not have it open Saturday and Sunday when we get the most traffic from out of state. You're going to get a lot of bags right outside your yeah. gate. Yeah. They, they'll be putting them in the parking lot. I mean, if you, if you really look at I'm sorry, Tom. Sorry. Um, if you really come here kind of on a daily basis, you're going to find all, if it's too full, oh, I they, know that. they leave it. So putting a gate up around it, they're, they're just going to come and dump, dump it. on the outside of the gate. Absolutely. You, but we have the camera now, so you yeah, can have you've the got camera a, looking at that, right? But that's what I say. That's what yeah, the camera to doesn't crunch. I believe that's what it's going to really come down to. You wouldn't kept your things, right? The things eventually you're going to have to have some attendance because when that price goes up to that big money, and which is going to, you know, I mean, once Triple T or like them guys go away from Holland there come July 1st. So then we got to hire somebody. Even if they give us the cans, we got to come hire somebody to come pick that thing up. You know, and Triple T ain't going to say, oh, I'll do it for $9,000 a year. I'll come get all your cans every all year long, just keep them dumped, put them there. They're going to charge you every load that thing goes out. They're running it across their scale. They're going to charge you so much a ton. And I said, you know, if it isn't Triple T, it's going to be Casella, it's going to be Tam, it's going to be whoever, you know. But they're not driving up here for nothing, not for a guaranteed price all year long. What? So, I mean, if you keep them, you know, see what it has to be. Eventually, you're going to have to. If not, you're going to have Brookline, everybody up and down the valley. When you start paying big money for them, I mean, these guys have been reasonable, you know, all these years. And that's going to go One away. of the things I did mention is that our board hasn't made a decision yet, but we will probably give those containers to the town since, you know, we have no need for them. So, if you were to continue, um, and, and also to answer your question, to use our facility, if the town drops that, um, you'd have to buy a sticker for, for trash Which I did. And, and recycling. We have not discussed if someone could just come there for recycling. Mm -hmm. And I imagine there will be a, you'll still have to have an access sticker to recycle. Right now you can just go in there and recycle right. without a sticker. Right. But again, we're going to be in the same boat as you, paying Triple T or TAM 
to haul our recyclables. And really, what Mike's pointing out is that there is very limited places to take this single stream. It basically will end up in Rutland, Vermont at Casella Waste. That is where Triple T takes it now. But if you have double stream, does it go down to Mass? The, the, the dual stream, dual as stream. we call it, um, it de there's a, the, really probably the only hauler that will do that is good enough, and that's because they recycle paper in their facility. But then they'll still have to pay for the bottles and cans, a tip fee. So, I mean, that sort of is a segue into this transfer station concept. I don't know if you want to talk about well, that right now. Well, also but just, just re remind them again, too, that at our board we are looking at is there another option of maybe keeping the MRF open for just the towns who would like to have the MRF open. So to keep the recycling going in Brattleboro on a smaller scale, and um, Bob, if, if we decide to do that, Bob's going to have to sort of re-figure out what it would cost to re-engineer using the MRF, but that's not entirely gone yet. So Some towns have asked to have us consider running it at a reduced scale where, for instance, your 12000 a year, you would pay that to the district um, as a fee. And then we'd have to look at how many towns want to do that. The board has not decided to do that evaluation. Right now there's a vote to close it, but it will be on the agenda next Wednesday, next Thursday the 9th, and whether or not the towns vote to evaluate this. So Bob, what you're saying is that um, you would become now the hauler. Uh, your, the Wyndham uh, would become the hauler rather than Triple T or something else uh, for a fee. Yes, that's, yeah, okay. that's what's been suggested. It's being suggested, but it hasn't been voted on. Right. Yeah. But not just the hauler. They would also continue and keep to operating be, the facility. To have the facility so that the, the stuff would not have to be ah, shipped so someplace else. So you would still else. have some employees working. We would still run it, but for, with reduced staff. It would be maybe. reduced amount. We don't know how to do that yet. It's, yeah. it's not easy. Um, mm. We have fixed costs. you got to have so many people there to handle and turn on the equipment and run it right. and just because there's less tonnage and you can't say oh please come to work three days a week we don't need you the other two they'll be gone these are you know labor jobs so well um, one of the things that uh, I talked to Mike about and Johanna is is the, the memo that I sent out to Shannon and the board last Friday that you you could consider I mean, you're talking about fencing and a secure attendant. Mm -hmm. You're really talking about a, a transfer station. Yeah. yeah. And um, four, three or four years ago, Townsend looked seriously at a transfer station. They have a transfer station at their highway garage where they bring mm -hmm. in a packer truck and pack it and take it down to Brattleboro. But they wanted to put it in a, a have a more sophisticated in another location not next to the highway garage because it's a problem right. for them. Uh, but they could not agree on a, a site. You know, it's um, a lot of controversy if you're going to put a transfer station. So um, I'm not advocating that you, you do a transfer station, but it is something you could consider. It's a choice. And like Todd said, maybe we sh maybe you should evaluate all these options for an, another year. Yeah. Right. And, and what I outlined here is, you know, what it might cost forty to fifty thousand dollars to build one. You're gonna have to have an attendant, you know. Then you have to pay to haul it away, and you know, you're, you're into some money every year. But if you shared it with Brookline or some neighboring towns, or allowed, it would be a regional facility. It could be a, it could be a good economic decision for the town. Well, I have a question here. Excuse me, but it says here most small towns have their transfer station open for just a few days per week. So why are we having to have this open 24 hours a day, seven days a week? Well, a transfer station is No, I understand, but I'm saying- It's because no gate. There's no gate here. Right, and what if we put up, it, let's say you, you said that you might be leaving these uh, containers for us. So if we put a gate around it, and if we had signs open Monday, and Thursdays from, I don't know what, nine till five or whatever it is. What's the difference? There is no difference. 
Yeah. Except but you wouldn't be taking trash, it would just be recycling. Yeah. And you would need an attendant. You'd have to verify that they are residents. Right. Because you're not going to have the condo owner going back to Connecticut. Right. Bringing in five people. No, I understand that. And you'd, you'd have people screaming if you weren't open at least Saturday because your average working person can't get here. Well, so it could be limited hours. No, it'd probably be eight to five or something. That's what the landfill used to be open on a Saturday. Maybe Saturday is about the only time that the normal working person can get here. Most towns have a Saturday, either half day. Okay, or full so day. I'm just saying it does. I don't but those see are I don't know of any. I don't know of any just recycling gated facility in the region. They're usually right. in conjunction with the trash right. yeah. transfer station. So we'd have to have tr uh, trash as well. Yeah. No, you could do it just recycling. You could. You, you could. could. Yes. Why can't? Yeah, exactly. Why but you'd have to put up the you fence and, and hire someone yeah. and establish hours and pay for the service. Right. Whether you pay a fee to the district. Still got to have it trucked away. So I, I wish there was a simple answer here, but it's. But I think that's why we need more time. Yeah, I do too. I mean, there are all kinds of possibilities. There are it also sounds like that um, they're going to be making a decision next week, or later this week, on uh, a possibility that it would require us to pretty much keep doing the same thing we're doing. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. Possibly next week. Thank you. Okay. Oh, we, we put this back on our agenda for our next meeting. We all have that information in front of us. The only problem that is the warning has to be in time. And if it's going to go on a warning for town meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does, I don't think it needs to. I don't think it necessarily needs to have to have to go before town meeting. I think if the town took their time, got this right, you can That's you can have a special meeting. The town's done special meetings before. Advertise it, get people together, find out what you want to do. I'd like to do I'm, I'm not saying not do that. anything, I'm just saying take your time and get yeah, it right. Exactly. Well, it's on the agenda to discuss during new business, so we could do that then. And we have a review and approval. Right. Yep. Um, Clark? Just wondering if instead of having it as a uh, binding, we could you could put it on as an article for discussion a, that would yeah, non-binding resolution right right just to say get the discussion during the town meeting and then see where we go from there with the new board yeah somebody could do that right at the end of town meeting anyway right mm -hmm. Deb? they could certainly do it under other business but it would bring more people to town meeting if it were on the warning yeah certainly so we could, yeah. we, we could put it on there just as a non-binding yeah. resolution. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't have to put figures in or anything, really. So there, we, uh, uh, I think so. The different yeah. types of choices that are available. Right. As yeah. So or, that or uh, the taxpayers would be investigating and looking into and asking questions and all that sort of thing before they uh, come to town meeting and discuss it and take the non-binding vote. So would that involve at town meeting figuring out some kind of? Uh, You'd have to have some educational materials, maybe uh, you know, poster board type things with sure, different options, and yeah. have figures that you're going to be giving okay. us, etc. Okay. And um, yeah. Why would we have to have a non-binding vote? Why do we have to have a vote if because we're just we, giving information? Well, because we are wanting to know what our citizens are thinking and wanting. Didn't you just say non-binding? Right. But, yeah. Well, you could still have a nine. You could still bring it before. Correct me if I'm wrong, Deb. But you can still bring it before town meeting and tell them this is a non-binding resolution, which means you're looking to see how many people want to do what. Doesn't mean the select board is going to do it because they got to look into everything else that's going on with this thing. But they know that you know 50% of people want it, 50% don't want it, and which way to go with the whole thing. Yeah. It gives you guidance, basically, is which way to go with this thing. Yeah. So, yeah. It, it, a non -binding, it, either way, a binding article or a non-binding or, or a non-binding article would serve several purposes. Um, one is it would it, it would warn everybody who reads the warning 
that this is going to be under discussion. And um, there are people who will be passionate about it and show up because of that. And there are people who say, I don't want to go because I don't want to talk trash. So, <laughs> you know, um, then it, uh, it's also an opportunity to ask for members of the public who are interested, depending on the outcome of whatever you put on, to ask for members of the public to work on a committee so that it doesn't fall just to the select board or just to Johanna to, to do all the work. The more people you can get invested, mm -hmm. the better chance you have of getting something passed. Um, if you have a non-binding meeting, uh, warrant article, you can't, you can't raise, you can't, it can't be amended to have money on it. Right. Because it's not been warned. Whereas if you put a binding amount with money on it, it can be amended and it can be passed or it can be um, declined. So you can have the same discussion either way. Uh, if you put money on the line, you get more people there. <laughs> the, the other option would be that um, if we did a binding resolution and it's tied to money, uh, and we found out that we didn't, we didn't either have the sense of what the, the public wanted to do or we had better information, uh, we simply uh, motioned to uh, table it. That's my parliamentarian. It's a parliamentary procedure to simply uh, table the motion, and you table it to a, not, to a time not certain, and then it just goes away at the end of a uh, town meeting. Uh -huh. Or you don't have to vote it, but you just need to have the placeholder in to um, uh, meet all the legal requirements for the warning. So I don't know what it costs to have a special meeting and how many people would come to a special meeting. So that would be an argument in favor of having some kind of resolution that could be amended, or, or as, as Gary is suggesting, can also be tabled as long as somebody in the audience is at the meeting is on their toes and knows how to do that. Um, but either way, having some article pertaining to this on the warning means that it will be discussed. If you leave it off the warning, it won't be discussed. No one will know about it. Nobody will know that this is, you know, it might come up under other business to the six people who are left. And, and then when you have a special meeting, people will decide, the, the tendency is for people to decide what they think before they go and then to come. And there's, it tends not to be a discussion, um, but, uh, you know, sort of a, more of a tussle of, of privacy. It's like NFL football. Who's going to win? <laughs> All right. Um, any more discussion on that? We've got to discuss solar with you, too, apparently, right? Yes. Anybody got anything else for him on this other stuff? No, I think that's... Let's get into the solar part of it, then. Shannon said we might have a contract or something. That um, I believe you were sent a, a draft contract. And um, you also were sent a 20-year pro forma showing what the town would save over the course of this contract arrangement. Just to make sure you understand, the Wyndham Solid Waste District is purely leasing land to a private company to build this. The contract would be with the private company for, your, for the energy credits that... Um, that would offset your electrical costs. You, you were speaking of street lights. Street lights are not eligible under the uh, group net metering program. And your annual savings would vary, but somewhere from 11, 1,200, 1,500 a year over 20 years for a total of somewhere around 28,000 if you signed on to this. Most towns are signing on at what's called 80% of their uh, electrical usage thinking that if they make energy efficiency savings, like changing lights, that they don't want to be committed at what their 100% current is. So you have some time, now that you've just been getting this information, to take a look at it and see if you think it's worth it to sign on. Um, quite a few towns are signing on. When's the deadline? How close are we to that? Uh, you, you'd have another probably month. Uh, they keep, they, it has moved back a little bit. 
there was an amendment to the agreement that was just recently put out that the attorneys finally started paying attention to it, so it slipped. But all the permit applications have been filed with the state, the, the Vermont DEC for the landfill permit that has to be amended, the Public Service Board, the filings were made in, in December. Um, it will take until probably April to get all these permits. Um, you're a small off taker, I think your percentage <coughs> was around 2% of the total five megawatts. Um, so you're not critical to the, you know, the, the developer, but obviously 15, 20 towns at that level have become uh, important. But Brattleboro obviously, Brattleboro Housing Authority, uh, some private off takers and, um, are in the wings to pick this up. So I, I just wanted to let you know that it's on the table. Shannon has all the documents. The the uh, developer's agent is out of Burlington. It's called Encore Renewable Energy. Jesse, Jesse Stahl, uh, a man, Jesse, um, is available to talk to you about the terms. You might want your town council to look at it. You can see there's quite a bit of reading here. Yeah. It is. It's, it's, and it's way, a 20 year deal. way more than we can. Bob Fisher is the town council for Brattleboro and quite a number of towns, and he spent a lot of time on it. And um, so, I it's just a question: is does the town want to take advantage of this? I we've talked about it, and I think we do. Mm -hmm. um, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what I think. Is what this we've been just for about. the town? Just for the town offices and? It's any town metered building. So Any schools, town well, the schools, school. well, your highway garage, this, this building, Williamsville I think that's Hall. really, I forget how many meters you have. The Williamsville Hall, the old town <coughs> garage, the new town garage, this building. What else do you have? Any of the, the properties that the town owns, is that correct? Yes. And so those, so that information was, four. Shannon through the board allowed Green Mountain Power to give that to. So those calculations are based on your... Now what about the fire departments? They're independent from the town, but do they, they serve the town as a... obviously as a function as... Um, but they're not town-owned. So far we haven't had fire districts. Schools now, again, they're independent. But I mean, if we go to the town, to, if the town does that, can they include the fire departments into that? That's a question for Jesse. Yeah. I don't know the answer to that. Because that would be quite a savings for the fire departments too, I think. I don't know the answer to that. School districts are signing up. Um, so in that case, we'd have just Newark Elementary, right? We don't have any other schools in one of the town. The supervisory unions um, are all pretty much on board. So we certainly don't. So I just want to bring it to your attention is that if you are going to do something, you need to look at it the next month. I have lots of questions about sure. this. I mean, I, I got this paperwork at 3 o'clock today. I went home. I have no idea what you're talking about. None. None. I'm looking at the TV. None. And, and I'm None. not even trying to explain it all. So I can't understand the thing about this. And so I um, had my husband look at it. Very bright person. <laughs> Knows so much about everything. I said, could you please read this for me? He came back in the room. I said, so can you tell me what you understand? He said, I don't understand anything. Because he's looking at things that apparently are not here and maybe I've missed at other places. For example, um, he was looking up uh, the financial credit worthiness of the Sky Solar. Just because you know, right. that's what he does, he goes online. And he said that this has only been a public company for 27 months, is that correct? I right. do not know. And that, I, um, but it's, a, it's a Chinese company. Yeah, out of Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, we, we saw that. And that the stock, uh, stock has gotten very low from the beginning, from 16 a share to 1.74 today. So his question is, this is just one of many questions, is how secure, how secure do you feel um, 
with a company that's relatively very new and right now apparently in stock worthiness is not performing well. Maybe well, you raise really good questions and we have looked into those same issues. We initially signed a contract with another company who was um, also based in China. I believe it was, um, well anyways, they then sold off the assets, and we were one of those, to this other company. Mm -hmm. And Ralph's here, and he's seen the uh, turmoil of uh, solar. Yeah. I call it the solar coaster. And um, <laughs> so the way the district decided on this, we're not at risk. We're not putting in money. I mean, we spent some money, obviously, on attorneys, but if in fact they just um, this go under, there's a significant asset there that someone would pick up for this facility to be built and in operation at the, at the rates that Green Mountain Power and the Public Service Board have authorized, it's a very attractive deal for someone to own. So That's can what you explain told. something to me? I don't know if Ralph thinks it's similarly about that. Can well, I? Just to ask a question. Though. Just because he's a I mean, when, let's say, if you're leasing um, property and to put your equipment on it, and and I assume you're counting on the fact that um, once everything is in place, that residents are going to be buying into this. Is that correct? Not individuals. It's only municipalities and only credit, Oh, and no individuals. Working. Yeah, this is different than some of the things you've discussed here. Okay. Right. So here it's only... Uh, oh, actually, there's credit Are you there, Gary? Oh, can I yes, just finish? I'm here. I'm all oh, oh. Yeah. So, so okay. they, they, they have to be deemed credit worthy by the developer. Okay. Municipalities are excellent off-takers. Okay. So you would have to companies. have the guarantee of the different municipalities. Well, they, they signed that agreement, and they're yeah. basically uh, guaranteeing that they're going to have that percentage of the project. However, if a town were to change their mind in the future, they could they could train and the contract allow, allow, allow that to be transferred to another municipality mm -hmm. um, or another credit worthy off taker. So the, well, these so, are good questions. Um, so, I think with Ralph, when we talked to Ralph, my understanding was, and I could be wrong again, that there were really no um, financial commitments from the town. That's correct. Yeah. So, is that the same in this case also? That's this case. There's no financial commitment from okay. the town. So, if it went away and they folded, you just would go back to what you're doing today. Okay. Or else and, and here's one thing that I personally don't understand, so maybe, and it goes for this too. Why would somebody sign up with this? Or um, they're going to, where are they getting their power from? From Green Mountain Power? Yes, it's or, all through Green Mountain Power. Yes. But you're getting these net metering credits because it's solar right. energy that reduces your bill by approximately 30%. Right. So, is there a financial commitment when uh, the municipalities sign on? There's no financial commitment at all. At all. There's no re anything that they could come back and charge you for, or it, you just basically, if they pulled the plug on it and said, "Oh, we're done," then you would just your rates would go up. Okay, so for me, I yeah. think I, I wouldn't be ready to vote. No, I, I still and I have to not, learn. I, I said to Shannon, I'm just here to yeah. say, hey, for some reason, you your town board had not really been discussing this yet. No. And that's all I wanted to do, say it's an opportunity. I think most towns are concluding it's a good opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, and I would hate to have you not have the opportunity. Right, okay. Right. Um, if, if you're wondering what's going on and you have the document, you know, the rest of us without any document and no... You, you might know. be in better shape. <laughs> At least you don't feel stupid right now. <laughs> well, I mean, the issue of a Chinese corporation uh, being involved in this, 
uh, as opposed to that's what you said or Hong or based on no Hong no Kong. He, no it's Chinese. Bob said oh. it's Chinese, Chinese and I said yes we read that it's from Hong Kong right. I didn't say good or bad I just well, made a statement I'm throwing out the idea yeah. okay. or proposing the idea that maybe that's not the route you know we would want to go and would seek to favor more local right. providers right I mean in the spirit of what we do here in right. New Fame, Vermont. So. And if you had other options locally with local based companies, that's, that's certainly something you should consider. Right. I mean, yeah, Vermont is totally supposed to well, be. What happened with this? Purchase locally. Is this is an unusually attractive financial deal created by special legislation that was, that was designated this project on the closed landfill in Wyndham County. Senator Peter Galbraith sponsored this, and it was like a gift to Wyndham County. Yeah, I actually think that it's a pretty amazing thing because the town benefits from it. It's also a really unique project. For the, I think it's the only one in the state, and maybe in New England, isn't it, Bob? Where it's one of the largest, if not the largest, solar net meter project in in. Vermont. And it's using a landfill site and not farmland. No, I understand which is, that. No, that's you know. so there's right. there's there's basically yeah. a lot of positives to it. And this has been kicked around for more than a year by many attorneys, many towns, um, and some private off takers that are waiting to jump in if the towns don't take it all up. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage you to do your homework. And make sure that what I've just said and what I believe the contract says is accurate. Yeah. Okay. And Thank you. you. Is it, is good good there, review. Isn't there a deadline for? Well, there's not a hard and fast deadline, but I would say within 30 days you should. How what's long? Gonna what's going to happen is the developer has to commit because they have to get their financing. They're going to start construction in April. They got to have all these contracts so they can go and get the financing. Okay, so the developer has to commit. When New Fame commits, is that an open-ended time, or do we when have to? you that, you're in for 20 years. Oh, okay. Mm, that was That's the question. Yes. That and was how, the question. 20 and, years. Uh, are we one of the last towns to get this information? Do other towns have this information? Have already? Every town has had this information since December. Some towns didn't really pay attention to it. Yeah. For what whatever reason. So what happens if we're in this commitment for 20 years on paper and it doesn't work out for whatever reason? Or oh, I think more than likely, like the, the, it might be the Chinese or something that are doing it up front. I mean, somebody's got to start it, just like Bob said. More than likely, it's such a big thing in all this. It might be an American company. The month after it's up and running, turns around and buys it. These guys are the initial groundbreakers, they get it going and they get the whole deal set up. And well, right, right now the company else. that we're dealing with is in Toronto. So it's a Canadian developer using Chinese investment money. We did some research, just as your husband did, through the Securities Exchange Commission, because you can ask, look at their filings, same information. I actually did the same thing and it was like, well, they've been up and down. Well, they just bought a whole bunch of projects. So they're, you know, mm -hmm. they have a huge cash flow, you know, issue. But on paper, apparently, this is all going to be. Well, what out. if the town wants to get out of this commitment, a twenty-year? He commitment. said we could sell it to another. Yeah, Minnesota. you can. You're obligated to, but you can transfer your your share to another credit-worthy off-taker. Or well, we're getting it offered from you is because we belong to the district, right? Well, no, we're no, actually we're, we're, we would have we to find lease it. the land. We, we would have we to. We won't control we who comes in and out district has no we're just literally going to get paid for uh, we're going to get a hundred thousand a year from whom from Next sky time. solar the developers just to use our Probably. 18 acres right. we literally have no we're not billing we're not we, so would new fame let's say new fame would want to sell new fame has to go out and find yes. a buyer yes and what if nobody wants to buy well there is some risk no seriously there is some risk there is some risk. Hmm. There's some risk. There is some risk. I, but I don't know how to quantify it. Yeah. And you know, you might say, hey, $28,000 over 20 years, maybe we don't care that much. Go with a local option. I, 
I'm not here to advocate this for the town. I just wanted to make sure you knew about it. And, and I don't have enough knowledge of the legal aspects to answer your questions. Mm -hmm. Well, I thank you for bringing it to us. You're even welcome. though it's sort of like uh, we're looking at, I'm looking at it by the seat of my pants and the fact that I've never seen this before. And um, uh, it's good to be able to ask questions. And I really. Uh, I'm and, and, and Jesse Stoll will come to your board meeting if you ask. He, I talked to him on my way over here tonight. He, What's he's, he's, about to put that name he's out of Burlington. Familiar. He, they're the, the, they were hired to put this whole project together yeah. by him. And he, he would come to the board and answer your questions, or you could have him on the speaker phone, just like Gary's on there. Yeah, at least we could uh, read it beforehand. Yes. <laughs> Can I also make a, a point? I think that when you did the project the first time, didn't you have local people who were supposed to install all the solar did you have one of the well, integrated solar was supposed to do yeah, it? Yeah, we that was because the developer selected integrated solar. Yeah. This developer has not told us who the local contractor will be yet. They're shopping that right now. So there's a, there are local people who are going to be putting the I'm I'm very confident it'll be a Vermont or even perhaps a probably a Wyndham County based construction company. Yeah, there's civil company site there's design. civil site work, there's electrical work, there's um, there's a, a lot of work over about a five month period. There's gonna be sixteen thousand solar panels, eighty eight inverters, hundreds of these um, they're called ballasts, they're concrete blocks because we're not gonna drill posts into the landfill. So there's gonna be thousands of yards of concrete electrical conduit running over 18 acres, new power lines, new um, transformer pad. So there's a, a lot of infrastructure. Fence, security fence around the whole site. So I, you know, coming back, there's, there's going to be a fair amount of local so it's work. It's a piece of wasted property. Yeah, yeah we're, we're, we're delighted because right. they're going to assume maintenance of that cap. The, 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 the vegetation mowing, and we're going to get a hundred thousand dollars a year for twenty years, which essentially goes into the money that the district has, which is good for. And, well, and then yes. that lowers every town's assessment. Now a hundred thousand spread over our whole district. You, you basically, it's a, it, the assessment is by per capita, so Brattleboro at thirty three percent of the total population in the district. Of that hundred thousand a year, mm -hmm. about a third of that goes to offset theirs. Yours would be some two or three percent. I like the fact that it reduces our cost by about eleven $1 hundred dollars per year for electricity. Um, in the current political environment, I'm not even sure a Chinese company will be able to do business um, in the long term in this country, investing or whatever. But you're, but you're saying. But That's a mystery, though. You're, you're saying that it's a Toronto-based company who just on the market is getting the Chinese Hong Kong investment financial money. investment money. Yes. The, so the, it's not really a Chinese but, company doing well, the work. But the, true, but the contract will be signed by a Chinese Firm. CEO. Yeah. Okay. All right, so what's the board's pleasure? You want to have Shannon put us on the next agenda? Yes. What's his name? Yeah. Stoltz. Jesse, Jesse Stoll. S-T-O-W-E-L-L. -L. He's been to many school board and select board meetings, and uh, this Maybe is what he does. Get him here at the next meeting. I mean, I think it's a good thing Shannon. that we've talked about it quite a lot anyways. We've heard about it, you know. And um, what do you say? It's like 30% then, right? It's something like that. I mean, compared to like what we was talking about with the Green Lantern on ours, and that's what we even decided, we'd be better off just to take the lease money on that. That pays what we've been paying out expenses every year on it. And but you'll still benefit from the lease payment of our project, even if you don't sign on. No, but what we're just talking about, you well, know, we take their we take their lease on our landfill. We take that money and put it back into our budget. And right now, it's been costing us forty five hundred. We'll make money off from that. You know, they'll close down landfill. Go with you guys at the 30%. You know, you're gaining all the way around. It's a good deal, you know. It's, um, no matter who puts it in, you know. Excuse me, Bob. What's Jesse Stoll's... Um, He's 
He's with Encore Renewable Energy. Encore Renewable Energy. In, Wills, in, in Burlington. And Shannon has all his contacts. Say one okay, so Shannon, Shannon knows. Yeah, and they've talked. Okay, good. Motion to, motion to pay for time, sir. Second. 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 Motion's been made to table this until time certain. Is there any other discussion? Can I just say, I think you did send them this information some months ago. Right? Oh, yeah. This yeah. Was, it all went out. It just sometimes, you know, it just gets lost in the... Oh, well, we talked about it. As I said, we've talked about it. Two well, we didn't have any... No, we didn't company. talk about this company, did we? No. No. Well, we knew it was happening. We knew it was going to be... They were, they're not so sending they, contracts to towns unless towns had requested right. Because what they had to do first was allow access to your electric meter for Encore to go in, get your Green Mountain Power account. So we had written permission from Shannon to Green Mountain Power to give this, because it's your own pri proprietary account. Mm -hmm. So that's what's now happened, is so you're suddenly on the table. But there's um, probably six towns and several school districts that have already signed. Uh, I don't have the latest, but... Um, I'm still missing something in my brain here. It's like, with all of this that's being built and all the equipment they're using, and that there would be contract signs, you're saying that we don't have to pay anything for this? Correct. You Can you come wait, to my house wait. and give me an offer <laughs> you just so wait I could do the, work, all get you all What over. happens is literally when that starts generating electricity next August or September onto the grid, yeah, that's when you start to benefit. We just start you, to benefit. You just wait for that. But we never, ever pay a penny. You pay less for that spreadsheet. You pay less. Right. I have not heard of a, a real serious negative or risk to any town from this. And we've had some, we actually retain one of the best solar attorneys in Vermont that represents municipalities. Um, his name is Eth Ethan McLaughlin, and he reviewed this on behalf of Wyndham Solid Waste District. Ethan would also be glad to speak with you. And he drafted the amendment which is providing even further protection to the towns. Um, so you could have a, a, a contract that incorporated the amendment and not have to have a contract with an amendment. That's what Brattleboro is going to do. So, and then Bob Fisher and his firm and other town councils have reviewed this. Our council, we have another attorney, has also reviewed it. His name is Chris Callahan, of Brady and Callahan. So, and Lou Bruzo is our chair from Jamaica. He's on mm -hmm. the select board. I would have to really give him a tremendous amount of credit. He has taken this on as his own, you know, personal project as a, you know, a volunteer chair. Mm -hmm. And um, has been out meeting with many towns to help explain it to us. So anyways, that's all well, I can tell you. Thank you so much for coming and being patient with all our oh, questions. and. No, Exactly. Okay, we have a actually a motion on the here, so we need to act on the motion. But any other discussion? All right. Hearing none. All those in favor of tabling this until time uncertain? Is that what we said? Time certain. Time certain. Uh, which will be um, Shannon. Do you have the date for the next meeting? Well, she's not here. Um, oh. I I believe we're to give Shannon. I believe that. we're scheduled for February sixth. Okay, so it'd be for February sixth. Yes. All right. What's Everybody, that's the next meeting. Here we go. Sure. On February 6th, is that next meeting? Okay, oh, everybody okay. understand the, the motion? Okay. All those uh, in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed or abstaining? The ayes have it. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, folks. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Anytime you have questions about this solid waste part of this, I'm glad to come back. <laughs> help you that's great evaluate other options yeah okay, okay. Right. Thank, you thank you so much, so much. thanks yeah. thanks but can i just ask should i stay for the whole recycling thing or what it's up to you i still don't know what to do because i still don't know what I'm not exactly sure yet till we get into that either, but that's going to be a little bit before we get into it. So we have more things. To to mm -hmm. There's a dart landing if you want to go to a dart landing. 
a bunion field. They just toned it out. What are you talking about? All right, fight permit stuff. So we are down to Katrina Wilson, who I don't see a Katrina Wilson here. So Gloria Costelli. I'm really coming before the board as the town clerk today. As all of you know that I will be retiring and as of March 7th. So I wanted to bring up first and foremost, ask again, I didn't put it into a letter form, if I can use part of the restoration money to finish the project that I'm doing for the digitization. We have, we started the uh, fiscal year with over $2,000 still in that budget, and we've been adding to that since. Deidre's down, we have all the way down to book 52. Deidre's doing the back indexing for 55 right now. I've done all of the corrections back to book 68. Those have been filed. The scans that are sitting out in Ohio have been filed with our indexing. So I have approximately 18 more books to do the correction. This month is going to be very, basically it's proofreading. So I just go back onto it, make sure that somebody didn't get like fat fingers. The other day I saw a Fannie Mantel with three ends in it, and that's just a typing thing. So I go through and make sure once that's corrected, it goes on. But Deidre's money is running out, and Deidre will not continue as uh, an assistant town clerk. Uh, so the town at this point won't have an assistant that you pay. I have a Vermont associate person who's Peter Putnam, and he's paid by the federal government through the state. The town doesn't pay a penny for him. So he'll continue and will help out the new town clerk. So again, if somebody could allow me to use that money, specific number of hours, I don't know. Peter's been doing this on 10 hours a week and pretty much just using the well, just using the assistant town clerk money. But okay. the new town clerk could decide that he, she, whoever it is, that they want a uh, assistant town clerk, right? Why couldn't they? Oh, they can absolutely. Well, you just they said you just said we wouldn't have to be paying. You wouldn't. Them. You wouldn't have Deidre. That's oh really? I was going to say it's up to the next town clerk to decide Absol whether they want. Absolutely. Yeah. She she can appoint whomever she chooses to. What is the amount of money that's left? And with that money, are you saying that this entire project would be finished while you're still town clerk? Yes, all the way back to book 52. Uh -huh. Would be my best guess unless we get many more Act 46 mm -hmm. things and ballots that I have. And what is the amount of money? Do you know? We started, I did a check probably a month ago, and we started the fiscal year July 1st with over $2,000. And we've been adding, you know, 15, 150, it depends on what reporting comes in. And I didn't get that figure today. No, but what, you're, you're saying you want to be able to use the rest of that money, do you know what's Not left? Not the rest of it, just to use it. Until town meeting. Until town meeting. And then it would be up to the new town clerk so, so it's not going over budget, in other words. Correct. It's not. Oh, no. And it doesn't affect the next town clerk. Doesn't it? Not tie nothing. their hands so that they don't have any money to use for the rest of the year. I that I'm I can't guarantee right now with the amount that we paid out. So but they they certainly would have access to the restoration money that that you know just stays with. But the restoration money. Um, would go for other things, not your project that would be complete if you can now work on this. Yeah. Uh, if I had thought to bring out, we've got one box in, I have one box in there that's a $4,500 project to restore a miscellaneous. It has staples and tape and so there's a lot of stuff in there still that could be restored. What money are you looking to use? The restoration money or just the budget? restoration some of that, some to of that. make sure that I don't go over budget for um, 
I mean, I'll tell you how I feel, just on an emotional level with all of this, and might not make sense, but I know that this has been something you've been so committed to doing, and you have worked so hard on this restoration project with the books, and you're, you know, you you have um, fought for it in terms of wanting it to continue and to do whatever you can to keep working on it. And I personally would love to see you retire knowing that you have absolutely committed a project that you were passionate about. That's how I feel. Would the would this actual this project actually be completed? To the best of my knowledge, with having Peter do doing some of the correction with Deidre finishing the books and mine doing it, I think within the next five weeks we could have that done. So that'll be over 17,000 pages of documents that we've entered, that we've proofread, and that mm -hmm. we have. And at this point, anybody who knows a book and page no number starting with book 52, which by the way, only goes back to 1982. So books 1 to 51 are the first 150 years or so. This really still doesn't take us all the way back to the 40 years that we should have. But it's come a long ways. With the money that um, Mike, you know, we put into the um, project a couple years ago, that, that's been used. So that's Sounds my good. passion. Sounds good. Well, the money can be used for that. That's what it's part of, right? Yeah. So I have no problem with it. So we make a motion. I'll yes. make a motion. She can use it to finish out what she has to do. Yes, second. I second. Yeah. It's record restoration fund money, right? Right. So the motion has been made, seconded to allow Gloria to use the records restoration fund to complete the project that she has started and not go over. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 <coughs> Opposed or abstaining? Gary, did you fall asleep? Gary? There, okay. okay. I, had my, I had my phone muted. Um, <laughs> and, I had one question before we finish the vote. I'm looking at the budget, and this year we put 11500 in for town court records expense. Is this line item that we're talking about? You put it in for this year? No, no. Uh, budget for FY 2016, the current year's budget, shows that it's right. a line item for $11,500 for the town clerk records expense. Correct. We've used so far from that $10,965. Right. Okay. Uh, so this is the line item we're talking about. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there's there's that one because we did use that money instead of putting it into restoration, the board a couple of years ago put it into the records keeping. So I'm asking for a very special item of 09, which is the restoration fund. For every ten dollars the town clerk gets. One dollar goes into that restoration fund. Okay. So, what you see in terms of finishing the 2016 fiscal year, that money was used. Okay, but we have the money, and it's not going over budget. Correct. Okay, my vote is aye. Okay. All right. So it's unanimous. Okay. Thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you. As I'm going to be leaving. Um, pretty much I've provided my own office furniture and if we've needed anything I brought it in so these are the personal items that I can think of so for example this little table that Shannon uses is mine that cabinet that we've used for storage is mine um, my oak desk the assistant town clerk's desk uh, belongs to somebody else. Where I put up my, you know, what sit in my little cubby, that's mine. Uh, small table, oops, did that pine cabinet. 
I brought a bench to put underneath the table. Anyway, if you can go down through here, all of these are my own personal items. So all the pictures, all the decorations and everything will go out. So my mm -hmm. basic question to you is, um, for example, I don't need that oak desk. I have one at home. I purchased another one. Would the town be willing to buy it? I don't know what we have in small. I don't know if the new town clerk will have her own. What happened to the desk that was in there that was on the furniture room that disappeared? Um, I was standing in the corner the same, there. I believe the same time that um, Shannon said, Shannon's went out, that one went at the same time. Who did that? Because that was supposed to stay there for when you got done to go back in there. I believe that I had it done in talking with Shannon. We just said they should go. Well, it should have been. Now somebody's going to have to buy another one. True, but in... And it's been sitting out there for quite eight, a few years. Eight years, I haven't... The town clerk hasn't had any money put into. Maureen's had a new desk. Admittedly, Shannon's was donated. So it would just be a matter of or it'll just go. I think what I would see make a motion that we do it. I wouldn't mind just seeing what you talk about on you know just the list, you know. And have you come up with a price and we'll tell you if we want it or not. See what you take for what you want to leave and let it go with that. If you're all willing to do that, that's what I recommend. I'm just a little upset that it, that desk ever left. It was put there on purpose so that because when Gloria came here, she said she's going to move her own office furniture and stuff in here. It was brought up at that time that, um, well, what happens when she leaves? So I said, well, we'll put the desk out in the furnace room and we'll have it. And now we don't have it, so. What I'd like to see is I would like to see a price for each individual item that you're suggesting. And then that gives us, instead of a whole ballpark figure, that gives us yeah, I think that's whether right. or not we don't even need that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And um, it does does appear we are going to need a desk. And I don't know if we can within the, the um, small office furniture, I don't know how Maureen's $800 set got purchased, but it seems that there should be money on a rotating basis to be able to get a desk. Is that what the board wants to do, is have her? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I believe there's money in the town building fund. That's kind of to renovate the building, though. It's yeah. not, not for, that's a whole not separate. Not for purchase of yeah. uh, furniture. It's a whole separate thing. Uh, do we, what about in the 35 that was uh, set aside? That was. Would that be used for this? That 35 was basically for renovations too, but yeah, let's just, I mean, like Mike said, have her come up with a list. Yep. I mean, my oak desk cost me $149. I know. I mean, we're, we're not, we're not, we're not talking, talking big money. Right. Yeah. What you can do, I, I think, is put a price on each one of these items, get it back to us. Of the and, big ones, yeah. And uh, we'll uh, make that decision as to whether or not we want to purchase that or not. Okay? Yeah, and to tell you the truth, I mean, furniture's cheap. Right. Like that stuff. I mean, all kinds of people upgrading all the time. Yeah, I mean, I mean I've had friends I'm, of mine in Connecticut, and I go down and pick up stuff once a while. Yeah, and all I'm brand happy. Brand new stuff. And I'm happy to just take it. I just needed you to know yeah. that the office will be cleared out. And what was the other thing? I do know that the person running for town clerk, and today was the close of any um, petitions to run. Uh, she said something about wondering to her husband, what are we going to do with our, you know, furniture in her office? So you could easily have that. Mm -hmm. And part of this would be also, I don't know what your feeling is. Coming up at town meeting is busy, very busy. We also have a school, Act 46, which is consolidation. I have a page and a half of the article that we have to vote on at town meeting. Mm -hmm. So that's going to come up on the 7th, and if it goes 
yay, the town clerk has to do this. If it goes nay, the town clerk's going to have to do that. So it's going to be like, I'm here one day and not the next. The same thing in terms of moving my furniture out. You know, would it be okay if I work with Carol, assuming she's going to be the new town clerk? You know, just I can bring things in, take them out on a good basis so it's not just a stark boom. Well, like the presidents, they got one sitting in one end and one in the other. <laughs> <laughs> in one door and out the other. Well, that's essentially what, what this is. Right. But I might suggest, too, Carol is coming in. She's spending six, eight-hour days um, in training. So it's going to be a whole lot easier to hand things over to somebody. But there's still going to be that, especially with Act 46, with just the voting on the town, go for it. But Act 46 is going to be a... It's if this happens, that has to happen, and then go around the circle 15 times and do a backflip. Well, I'm sure, if, you know, if she needs help, then she'll probably get a hold of you. And she must have a little bit of money left for assistant town clerk in the budget. So. Yeah, it's just you can't train an assistant town clerk unless you know what you're doing. So that might be more than she can do. But as I say, Peter's willing to stay, and he. He knows most of the process. And then finally, I do have a couple. Uh, thank you for this. I did, do. We, did, we, uh, did we need to vote on that? We don't need to vote on that. I think I don't want to do that. Um, I know during audit time, I suggested that you need to have, for my protection and the new town clerk, uh, an audit done. We've talked about that. Yeah. And when I talk to the auditors, it's not going to be a $10,000 project that it was last time when I took office, but it'll just be a quick um, audit. But you'd still want to get that scheduled. And I'm going to suggest that if the board's okay with it, I contact the Dix Lock Company. We need to get the combination for the vault changed. I don't want anything coming back to say, oh, no, she knew what the combination was. So the next day, I will hand the keys, the, the night of town meeting, I'll hand the keys to um, Carol, if she's the elected one, and she'll know the combination. We will have worked through it. But as soon as possible, please get that changed. That's about $150. Shannon can take care of that, right? All she's got to do is have them change it and get the combination, and then she could have it, and then the town clerk could have it, and we'd be set. Yeah, it's really best if only Carol has it and Shannon doesn't. Well, the we've talked, yeah, and it's gone around, but that's the state. The town clerk is the um, keeper of the vault and the records, and it shouldn't be out to anybody except her assistants. So I think there's that one. I did one time come in, speaking of your cameras and all of that, the camera does not pick up anything that distant. It couldn't when we had a break-in, a potential break-in here. That camera doesn't go that far. And I put down at one point there was this mystery fly swatter. I came in Monday I'm, after I'm a... I'm supposed to be no, no, you're, that's not on that one. But I came in to find a fly swatter sitting in front of my computer desk. I don't own a yellow fly swatter. So... I wasn't going to have Shannon spend time looking through, but somebody was in my office and left a flight to the for him, I guess. Okay, so I think that that's it. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Still no Katrina Wilson here. Unscheduled members of the public. Letter from the treasurer. Where it is. Basically, it just said that um, she's getting done as well, obviously. Yeah. And she's willing to help train the new treasurer. Um, but we haven't heard what she's going to charge. Or how many hours. Or right. And we, we don't, don't even know specific. if the new treasurer needs any training yet. Yeah, we, we so. have no specific information.
information and we need to meet with her to get that specific information. I think we need to meet because today was the last day for these petitions. And if there's nobody running against her, the new treasurer, then we need to meet with her, see how comfortable she is with all this stuff. It would actually be up to her That's to exactly. request the help. Right. Mm. So, so we can't make any decision today. Right. And we need to talk to Maureen to, to see. Right. We need both she, of them. Right. So maybe Shannon can talk to the new town clerk and get a sense from her. Not the town clerk. All right. Not the town clerk. Sorry, sir. Get a sense from her what she's going to need, what she's mm -hmm. not going to need. And then right. we can invite, if she feels like she's going to need a lot of help, something we can invite Maureen here. Mm -hmm. um, there's nothing the board can do. To, it would be up to the treasurer right. to hire somebody anyway. So. so what's your pleasure? You want to table that until we yes. get a little closer to it? Yes. Yes, uh, I, I think not only we'll get a little closer to it, but also when uh, to request that Maureen would actually come and talk to us about what she's needing and wanting to do and uh, giving us some specific information. We need that. We can't make a decision without it. Right. So we need to invite her to come. So Shannon can do that for the next meeting. We'll yep. see if Maureen can be here for the next meeting. Um, is that all we have for that? that I think that's it. All right. What's, 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 she, what's she proposing in her letter, 125 an hour? Yeah. Well, no. no, that was no, Nimric. If we have to have Nimric come over, they're the people that set up the computer. Right. Yep. But if she does it, it would be less than that. I'm not sure what the rate would be, but okay. Um, yeah, the rate was 127 an hour. She said for Nimric. For Nimric. Right. Yeah. I don't know what it would be for Ma Maureen. Uh, Maureen. And like That's I said, why we need that information. But it's again. Being that she's an elected official, it's not up to the select board to tell her she can do it or she right. can't do it anyway. So, as long as she's not going over budget, but well, we could still feel it out, try to figure I it out. I think we owe it to the um, taxpayers to get that information yeah. and make it public. Absolutely. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I stepped out. Is that training for the new treasurer? Yes. And this new treasurer is willing to come in and spend two weeks just observing. That's why I, we said we should get a hold of Shannon and have Shannon get a hold of the new treasurer and find out what her expectations are. Because tonight was the last night for the petition, so if there's no other petitions. Oh, yeah, that's you know, true. She's, she's probably a shoe in unless yeah. somebody runs against her. But um, we need to find out from her what, she, what her plans are and then find out from Maureen what she's got for plans. What is she thinking? Try to put things together. Because the letter that we've got from Maureen, Maureen said that she did four and a half or about four and a half hours training with her, but it put her way behind what she was supposed to be getting done. And so we need to discuss all that. Okay. okay. As somebody who works in this office, I'm sorry, but this person has not been spending 40 hours in this okay. office and to train somebody somebody should be able to just observe i mean that's what i'm doing with carol should be able to come in and observe ask a question here and there but there's not one possible way that anybody could learn all of that with a one time over quickly and you know four and a half hours i mean well, she said that she helped her for four and a half hours. Yeah, I, I realized that. But it but put her way behind in her work. So, so she really didn't have the time to deal with it. Right uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> just, that's just a slight statement, but that's... Man. We're talking about the lady who's been operating as the assistant treasurer? No. No. No, the new... The new full papers? The, the woman who is running for the position of treasurer that's yeah. what we're talking about i think we just need to talk to maureen directly and, and to the woman directly melissa and, and melissa that's and it Mubak. we need to table this discussion yes. until next time we Absolutely. can have these people um, in front of us and asking yes. them questions good you making that motion to table this 
Yes, I'm. Um, he just made a motion to table until time certain of February, what did you say? 9th? 6th. 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 February 9th. Our next meeting. Is that our next meeting? Next meeting is February 6th. 6th. Very, okay. Monday the 6th. Five my motion to table to time certain for February 6th. Is there a second? Second. I second. Okay. There's been a motion made and seconded. <laughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed or abstaining? The ayes now have it. Moving right along, um, town meeting warning. Yeah, this is the big one. Is there unscheduled members of the public? Is there? That would be. Oh, that's no. coming later. Or that was what we were just now? that we were just in that. Because I wanted to get in on. Oh yes, please. If I might. Yeah. Certainly. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Ken Esty. Um, you know, given the president's uh, recent uh, executive order. Um, banning immigrants from seven nations, and given the fact that it might be unconstitutional on the basis of favoring one religion over another, you know, questions about equal protection and due process for immigrants, the possibility that there may be even more restrictions for immigrants coming forward. Um, you know, uh, Burlington is a sanctuary city, uh, which is very interesting. And I know uh, Governor Scott, who's a Republican, said that this executive order that was signed last Friday pushes us in the wrong direction. Those were his words in a, in a recent interview. So I was just wondering whether Newfane, you know, what kind of process Newfane would have to undertake, you know, to consider whether we might become a sanctuary town. And, you know, what would be the mechanism by which that discussion would occur? Mm -hmm. I would think that you would do it at town meeting after yep. town meeting's over at the last part for non-binding resolutions mm -hmm. would be to bring it up there. So that would be the place? In that would be the place to, to ask, yeah, and to get a discussion with the uh, townspeople. Open discussion and... Right. Uh, It'll be non-binding, but it get it, the discussion it, going. Yeah, that would seem to be a good thing. I mean, I know that uh, we have a fair and impartial policing across uh, the state of Vermont. So that uh, when a police person stops, you know, you don't ask about the person's immigration status, you know, when you're conducting the interview for a traffic stop. So that's a good thing that we have statewide, but there are yet other provisions that, you know, we may also want to consider. And, uh, you know, for Newfane to be a sanctuary town would be a tremendous example for the rest of Vermont. Um, so, town meeting? Town meeting. Okay. Right. Anything else? Thank you, Ken. Sure. Thanks. Okay. So now we are on the warning. We need to figure out what Town we're doing with the recycling warning. bins. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Where is it? What's your yeah. question? You want to yes. include the recycling bins or you don't want to re include the recycling bins? For a warning? Actual, oh, oh you yeah, mean in an article. I think I liked the idea of having it be a non-binding. Yeah. I think any kind of education, the more education, the better. And the more times um, that taxpayers are thinking about this and asking questions and trying to figure out what's best for them, uh, and we get that information, the better. So, um, in making a future decision. So. So would that mean you would not have an article? Then? I can barely hear you. Would that mean you would not have an article then? It would be an article, but but non-binding. A non-binding article. And this would be a warning. Which would be Article 11, which yes. right now says shall the voters of the town of Newfane authorize expenditures in the amount of thirty thousand for the purpose of keeping up to two recycling bins at the town property to be picked up either by private hauler or by Wyndham Solid Waste. So all you have to do right there would be put non-binding. So we know what that decision is anyway. Helps us go forward and it helps the citizens to know what the heck is happening. Yeah, so um, uh, one of the things that I noticed was I think I sent to Shannon a change where it would not read exactly like this. It would say, shall the voters of the town of Newfane authorize expenditures in the amount of up to 30,000? Okay, write that down. Yes. Up to 30,000? Mm -hmm. Right, so if it's a non-binding 
article, I'm sorry I don't know the ins and outs of this enough, but does that mean that, um, that there has to be another meeting about it to approve the money, or it, does, it, does it mean that it's then up to the select board to decide? Um, I would think they'd have, I would, I don't know this legally, but I would think that they, they would have hearings to decide it so the public could come in and voice their concerns or whatever. Because according to, I, then I it would be up to the select board. Yeah. So, but they would still have to have more meetings about it, you're saying? I would. I, I'm not sure that we have to. But okay, because what I was thinking is that we would be doing the education there at the town meeting. Yes. Having the various options so that voters could make a, uh, an informed decision at town meeting. The biggest problem with that is yeah. that you're going to get about, if you're lucky, a third of the eligible voters in the town of New Bank because the rest of them are working. So it's not really a fair, to me, it's not really fair to do it that way. And another thing, too, is when, when uh, people come into the town meeting and just go vote and, and leave, so they're not even going to be part of the discussion. They may not even know what the discussion is about. They just come in and vote. They see that they're, now they're kind of uh, uh, thinking about it because it's on the ballot. I mean, they're having to vote. So. I see that I as think, a win-win. I think of like last year, I don't think there was more than 80 people at town meeting yeah. out of 1,200 people. So it's not, to me, I'd rather have this, the next select board, which I won't be on, but have a couple public hearings for it. Once they come back and figure out what, what it is that they wanted to mm -hmm. propose. Yeah, I mean, I asked Deb what she recommended, and she recommended um, having it being a binding article. I don't like the idea of putting a thirty thousand dollar figure on it, or up yeah, to no that, either. or anything. Because yeah. I mean, not just that. Now you actually just increased our recycling thing with waste management, and that up to fifty some thousand. And then, um, you know, I mean, Deb yeah. said if we put a, fig a mon monetary figure on it, it's a different kind of a meeting, right? Didn't she say it has to be she warned? Be has to be warned. What? Say that again, Gary. She said it could be amended on the floor. Ah. Debated on the floor. Amended. Amended. Amended, Amended. on the floor. Yeah. I can't hear a thing. Because somebody could just make a motion to table the whole thing. Then it's a, exactly. Then it's dead yeah. in the water. Right. So that was the reason that um, I think that having it in here the way that it is meets both of those uh, requirements. It's here as a placeholder. If we find out between now and town meeting that the amount is going to be more than that, we can present it at town meeting so we, this was putting it as a placeholder, but the real amount should be X, X, X. Right, you can make an amendment. Well, if we find out after next week's meeting that the, uh, the board at uh, Wyndham Regional decides that we could keep our existing transfer boxes and continue to operate as we're now doing, then we this motion would not be necessary and we would table it. Are you good with that or you wanna I'm good with that. Or do you wanna take that out of there? Well, I mean I guess I can leave it to be tabled or whatever, but I mean I'm not in favor of raising another thirty thousand but I'm not either. Because like the way I look at it, like I said, what they say there's two hundred people using this probably? Out of how many? Twelve hundred. Twelve hundred. So you know, it's um, three quarters of the people are paying to have their recycle taken away. And no, I mean, a lot of us are taking it away ourselves. Well, well I, mean, I, think I guess what I'm getting at is if they're going to do that, like I said, it cost me an extra $10, Tom an extra $10. Maybe we all ought to pay everybody's recycling bills. You know, if we're going to have these dumpsters out here for that, pay them all. It's going to raise 30, let's raise 100,000. I mean, I think the, fair, point, fair, the right? point of the article is, is to give voters a chance to speak their mind. Um. Well, that was also another thought that I had while listening to the uh, discussions earlier, is we could just do away with recycling in new things if there are other options. Right. And if that were, if, if, if this article were voted down, then that would be the end result, is that recycling at Town Hall would be ended. Right. Yep. Except for the town hall. 
they're still going to have to because it's a law. Somebody here will have to take that, have to take the recycling, or have it picked up. Well, it goes so over. recycling bins would disappear. Right. The whoever. Well, it's good. Is it good enough? I don't know. I don't remember who's doing it at the town garage anymore. But that's where all this goes. It goes over to the town garage in a dumpster. Yeah. It used to be Reed and it's whoever he sold out to. So, it would still be able yeah. to be recycled over there. So, with the article as stated, it could be amended on the floor if we got a better number, or it could be killed on the floor uh, for lack of a majority, in, in which case recycling would stop. Or, if we found out that Wyndham Regional is going to continue to operate at least the new phase and some select out the way that they, we have been, then the article becomes unnecessary and we go to table it. I'm going to need a cheat sheet when we get into the town meeting <laughs> with all of those options. Well, I mean, I think that, that will probably be my job to come up with <clears throat> some kind of visual to show what the different options are and I don't think that's going to be difficult because I think there's probably going to be three or four options at most. Okay. So that's not hard to do. Um, I think that sounds good. So should we have it uh, continue on with uh, signing this um, warning yeah, we have to uh, but having it be non-binding? Put non-binding. Oh, this would be binding. It will be binding. All right. Article 11 would be I, mean, I, don't have a problem with I don't think it should be binding. I don't think there should be anything with a figure we, think, we don't know what it's it, going to be. If it's binding, you have some parliamentary options which you don't have if it's non-binding. Oh, right. It could be amended. It could be tabled. It could be, um, uh, you know, it could be voted down. In which case, we, we didn't have a clear direction from the voters as to how to proceed. If it's not binding, it can only be voted up or down just the way it's worded. Ah. I believe that's what I understood, understood Deb to say. Yeah, I think that's that right. sounds about right. All right, what's the pleasure? I just should keep it non-binding, but what's the pleasure? And like Mike said, this 30,000. Up just to, up to 30. That's what I put in here. Yeah. What I have written down here is shall the voters of the town of New Fane authorize expenditures in the amount of up to 30000 for the purpose of keeping up to two recycling bins on the town property to be picked up either by a private hauler or by Wyndham Solid Waste Management. So she's already got that in there, but that it might be still picked up by Wyndham Solid Waste Management. It's already in that article. So. Buddy. I believe that um, if it's going to be picked up by Wyndham Solid Waste, if uh, Johanna's still there, um, would it would we still be paying the thirty thousand? But that would be our membership to uh, uh, that would be our, our membership to Wyndham Solid not Solid Management, right? Well, we don't know we don't know what that amount will be yet because um, this is a this will be a totally new arrangement. So there's a certain amount of research that has to be done to figure out the cost. Okay, so there would be a number in there. Well, by town meeting, I should have that number, yes. Okay. But we have That's to. That's our challenge. We have That's to sign our challenge tonight. We have to do it tonight. We could leave it blank, and then if you wanted to, if you're going to do a a regular article, somebody could add in what it's going to be. A town meeting. Yeah, but then we wouldn't have actually signed it. Yeah, we have to sign it tonight. No, you don't. Because do there's a lot of there's a bunch of stuff that gets brought up at town meeting that gets added to the budget. Well, um, I mean, I put in thirty thousand dollars because I figured right now we have three bins, um, and based on the figures that I got from Triple T, where I figured it was between ten and twelve thousand dollars for one bin, that if we had three bins which we probably don't absolutely have to offer that much, but if we, if we did have three bins, that's roughly $30,000. So that's where I came up with that figure from. Um, so instead of up to 30,000, no more than 30,000. Right. 
I really don't even like the way the article's written. But uh, I would, I'd rather have not have had any amount. I mean, if they want to talk about this, I don't see them mind talking about it and figuring it out. But I mean, we don't know what it's going to cost. I mean, that's why you have it up to. So, but what, what if it costs if, more and people right. still want it? Then they don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> they get thirty thousand. When the thirty thousand is up, everything stops. It's like the guy that was going up the hill one day and wanted to know if the guy'd pull him up the hill. The guy said, "What? So what's it going to cost me?" And the other guy, and this is a local. This actually happened. The guy said fifty bucks, and the guy in the car said, "Well, we only got twenty-five. And he says, "That's all right." Pulled him halfway and off the chain, they drove off. And that's the true story. So that's what we do with this. <laughs> uh, the other issue you you. The board may have is if this deal with WW goes through, you may not have a place to put the bins. Correct. All right. That's what I said. I think there's too many ifs right now. You know, yeah. what ifs? You know, what I else? I mean, that's why we were saying that we were gonna. I mean, we're gonna have to address it sooner or later, this. anyways. Right now, we're good till July. You know. Right. Yeah. You know, before July comes, when we figure it out. You right. Know? So we would have to that's warn it and have said. a special meeting. Well, yeah. the other. You know, the other issue is on the Wyndham Solid Waste end, which is that um, they are in a situation where right now they are either facing, I mean, they're basically facing closing the MRF altogether. Um, but if we try to figure out some alternative situation, then the MRF may not close, which I think is actually really important for the district. I, I have a feeling that if you close the MRF and everybody has to rely on private haulers, I think the price is going to go through the roof for everyone. Um, and, you know, once you close that thing, it may be impossible to reopen it. So I'm, I'm of the school of thought that we should at least look into what the option is, um, you know, for binding together with some other towns to keep it open. Well, see, so in, in that case, though, so that's what... And that's what I'm thinking is, that's what I said, we got till July, and our money's already in the, the Wyndham Solid Waste anyways, waste management, whatever, at 20-some thousand a year, right? So well, instead of taking our money that they're going to use to close it, it would continue being the same amount of money as what we're doing now to keep it running. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I, mean, if I, do I really have no idea what the, what the, you know, you, you have the, the stuff that comes in and then the stuff that you manage to sell and if you're getting less stuff coming in um, and you still have a certain amount of fixed costs for running the place, you have less to sell, you know, how does that all work out? How many towns want to participate? There's a lot of, you know, there's a well, lot so of... Well, that's what I'm saying, you know, maybe between now and July, by the time they figure it out, you know, say we're already giving them the 20 some grand, which he already said, you know, this year our money is going to be used to help close that thing down. Say if also they decide right. they're going to keep it open for X amount of towns, maybe our price goes up five grand instead of you know whatever, and that would be the thing. At that point, we come back and say yes, you know, no, we're going to do it, you know. And I think you know five ten thousand, you can probably almost do that without even going out to a boat, you know. But I mean, you still have that option, but at least you wouldn't be have to hire another haulers and then because you're going to be at their mercy when that happens, and it's going to go up. That's, there's no question. Yeah, I, mean, my, I guess I guess I'm seeing it in a, just a different time frame from you. You seem to want to just wait until July to make a decision. Oh, Whereas really? We I'm, don't have a, We don't have a, really know. Like he said tonight, and like you said, that there's other towns now that are trying to pressure them maybe to keep it going. And if it really is feasible for them, they might. You know. So so they're 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 doing the same thing. But the thing that I think is important. Yes, I I see your point. It's kind of like too early to come up with some kind of decision to put on a town warning at this point. However, we need to have a decision made before July. Even uh, we need to actually get the uh, taxpayers, in my opinion, involved in this decision. We don't want to like have everything just going along sort of uh, the way it is on automatic, and then it comes July, and now the board is going to have to make a decision. I'd much rather know what the citizens are wanting, what decisions do they want before we have to come up and sign the dotted line and make the decision. So I think I would prefer having some kind of something, whether it is a um, 
you know, a ballot or whatever, or some type of presentation at town meeting with a, a hearty discussion. And but unfortunately, the town meeting only represents a minority of the voters. Yeah, but as, as we talked about, you do have this front porch forum option, you know, to, to at least educate people. Um, I mean, I, I, I guess maybe we could do a, another vote at a different time. I don't really know. In a know, special you know, meeting, but, and, but you know how many, how few people come to special that's meetings. That's the thing, you know, so I mean, even less Deb was saying usually when you have a special meeting, there's a certain population that shows up and it that's usually it. has to do with money, you know, and they're probably not going to be particularly positive. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that town meeting is where you do have that's the most it. people, isn't I, it? I, you I, never I, get, you never get that many people out in one place at another time of the year. Well, these votes these we things. had for the town office, there was 800 and some odd people. Well, That's a whole lot better than 80, town meeting. That's true. Well, yes. That represented the... There was only 80 last year. Sure that represented... I counted them. I don't remember. It was somewhere around there. It wasn't many more than that. But, um, you know, the difference is if you get 800 people there compared to 80. Yeah, and I wouldn't even mind this article if it went out to a vote, if it was done at an Australian vote. Ballot. Right. Not it's, just that show of hands on the floor. Well, isn't that what we're doing? No. It does not. This what? is going on in our country. You vote at it right at right town meeting. So everybody raised their hand, yes, no, and that's it. You know, it's not passed. No, it I, I thought well, I we don't want it to uh, fail or pass, right? Um, this meeting, don't we want just to give information and it, it's Well, the way it's wrong, if they vote on it, you've got to, they can spend that 30 grand up to that thing. Right. That's what I said. If you're going to do it, I'd rather see it as an Australian ballot where everybody comes in that day, he's got a chance to vote just like they did on the town office. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's where you get your 800. And not have town hall, not have it at the town meeting, you think. So you can still well, do a non binding resolution right. at town meeting, right. a show of hands or what? Right. People want it would give the or a discussion, right? It would give the select board, whoever that's going to be, they can say, Okay, most people there wanted this, or none of these people here wanted it. But let's go that direction and keep studying it until we get it right. right. I mean, the only other thing I can say is, I don't know how many of you are going to be here after town meeting. Are you how many of you are going to I be think here? I'm the only one that's getting off. He yeah. thinks he's getting off. He, he doesn't know that there's blue <laughs> at the bottom of the screen. Because yeah, the uh, deadline is already gone, so I'm off. <laughs> Was the deadline today? Yes. Yeah. So it's, just, it's just the idea of like a new board having to learn the whole thing. And, no, I believe I'm the only one that's going to be off. Sadly. Very sadly. <laughs> no. <laughs> happily. Very happily. <laughs> <laughs> I've done my I'm nine looking years. At, I'm looking at what we put in the budget. We put in 21095 and then I think that it's looking like 17000 is what finally got approved. The proposed budget is 17000 for Wyndham County, uh, WSWMD. The whole thing? That's, that's what the spreadsheet is that I'm looking at. Uh, it's on page 6. I don't, we don't have it in front of us. Oh, you don't? Oh. Okay, well, the um, special assessment, the WSWMD no, assessment never. for 2016 was 23850 and the budget for 2017 oh, was proposed at 21095 and the proposed budget for FY 2018 is 2017. What page? Are you talking about what Shannon just gave us? The yeah. final, the final, the final threat. Well, the, the final, final budget. The final budget, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you're on page, on page six. six. Near the bottom of the page. Town garage? No. Oh, here it is. Seventeen thousand, right, Gary? Yep, that's it. Right here. Yep. So that's all we got in the budget. No, the budget for two thousand seventeen. It's got twenty one. It's twenty one. That was for two thousand seventeen. This is for the two thousand eighteen budget, the one that will go to town meeting. In March. 
is 17. That's true. Yeah. Okay, we need to move on with this thing, so. We have to make a decision um, on whether we're going to Warn or amend no. this warning or. I would like to see it amended to non-binding and it gives you guys. But we can't, if it's non-binding, then didn't you say, or someone said, I think Gary. it was Gary said, Gary said, that you don't have the option of uh, tabling it or getting rid of it or voting it down or... What didn't you like, Gary, about having it be non-binding? Well, you have no parliamentary control over it. Um, it's a non-binding resolution, so you're just warning the... You're asking the people for their opinion, but it doesn't really have any power. So that's well, that's, uh, that sounds okay to me. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we've been wanting. Well, um, just like well, we, we, we're just we basically they have seventeen thousand dollars in the budget. The the non-binding resolution doesn't appropriate any money. Hmm. What is your well, view? That's I guess that's what we want. Okay. Mike, the mathematician here, he he he, uh, he says that's what we want, so it would have to be binding. Well, do you still? Are you saying that the seventeen thousand dollars that's already in the budget would not be in the budget either? Yes, it would be. It would be. It would be. Okay. This is on top of that. This, because that part of the budget is select board budget, and this this would be in anything in addition to the budget. So somebody make me a motion so we can move on. Mike. Like Gary, he's on bringing it up. The non-binding is it doesn't keep, have the money and figure in it, right? right. We, get, we had to talk about it, but it's no real decisions. Right. That's what we want. To. Is that what you're making you making a motion for? You want non-binding? I thought you wanted binding. I thought I want it so we don't have to worry about putting the figure in. Well, I thought you just said non-binding was the one you want. Or is it binding? Which no, one do you want? Non-binding, non -binding, you don't put a figure in it. Non-binding. Right. Is that but right, Gary? Having, but you have no... Non-binding doesn't, it doesn't have to have a figure because it doesn't mean anything. Um, it's just getting the will of the people, but it doesn't have any dollars connected with it. As you can see, we will have only $17,000 in the town budget for Wyndham County uh, Waste Management. All right. Then if you had a, you got your all your eggs in a basket and figured out if that's what you wanted to do, you could go to special meeting if you wanted to, right. if that's what you felt like doing. And if it's 30000 fine. If it's 20000 fine. If it's 200000 whatever it's going to be. Then you'll have the exact figure for your, for your special meeting. Right. It, it, so there's no reason to really put a number into the uh, Article 11 if it's a non-binding resolution. Right. You take the 300000 out and just what shall the voters 30, of town? 30,000. 30, yeah. <laughs> shall the voters of, of the town of Newfane authorize expenditure? Well, you wouldn't have expenditures. Uh, you have to be really well. Basically, for right. keeping two recycling bins at the town office Shane property. Said we need to rewrite it tonight. Yeah, I did. I think you'd have to rewrite that whole article. Otherwise, you, you, you would have to rewrite it. it. Yes. Okay, Gary, this is what I heard from Shannon today. We are to okay. rewrite it at this time and, so sign that she, it. and sign it. So basically it would say something like uh, Article 11 is non-binding. Does the town of Newfane wish to continue with two recycling bins on the town of Newfane property? Either be, picked up, be, either be picked up by a private hauler or, or by Wyndham Solid Waste District. Is that something? I would even take that that the last part out. I'd simply leave it as do the do the citizens of Newfane wish to keep two recycling bins on town property? That's it. Yeah. So Remember, we still have all the eyes to dot or to investigate the, the possibility of keeping it based on the response from the citizens on this article. So you don't need to have any details in it at all. Just do you want to continue to do what we're doing? Or if you don't, 
and we'll have the discussion which, which will explain what each of these items are, and we'll have better detail available so we can have an educated discussion. Okay. And then we'll have the guidance we need as a board then to go ahead and make the correct decisions about how they uh, act out what the citizens want. Can you okay. come up with language and call Shannon? No, we have to sure. Shannon. But you guys have to sign it, don't you? Yeah, we have to sign it. So how about this? Uh, well, how about, can it be that shall the voters of the town of Newfane um, authorize expenditures, no, no, no amount. No amount. No amount. No, 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 no amount for the purpose of keeping um, up to two recycling bins on the town property. Well, I don't even know you have to put a non-binary resolution into the warning. Yeah, Gary said, um, I think you said, Gary, your suggestion was to say, do the citizens of Newfane wish to keep two recycling bins on the town property? Isn't that what you said yes. before? That's it? Yes. That'd be right. Yes. That's... I'm, and I'm fine with if that. If you look at the warning without the recycle bins, I think that's how we need to pass tonight. Because a non-binding resolution, I don't think has to be in by the night. Does it? Uh, this is what I heard. This is the information I got. Online. The non-binding resolutions have to be also be in tonight. She said. She said we have to sign this proposed tonight. resolution with this the deadline. Well, it says we can here, do it with um, warning right, without recycling. Please make a motion to approve this warning or amended warning, uh, and please sign if you're including the article about recycling bins. Then there's another one she's written up without anything to do with recycling yeah. bins. I would, I would be more inclined to vote for the, uh, the warning without the recycling, if we're going to deal with it as a non-binding resolution. We could do it right at the end of town meeting, in other words. Yeah, that's correct. All right. So it's not going to be an article, is that what you're saying? It'll be brought up and discussed at town meeting. It would be at the back of the uh, town report. The warning. Yeah, there's one. And what would the warning at the back of the town report say? Well, it would it would be um, would the citizens of New Fame wish to keep the two okay. recycle bins at town hall? On town well, property. Well, how easy is said, that? You said on town, town property. property. So we'll, okay, we'll, on town property. But will the voters see this prior to the town meeting? Yes, because they have the town report. It's mailed out. And, then. and is, right, but is it? I mean, is, it's is it written on the same page as all this? So they're definitely going to come across it. Where, Do you have a copy of uh, last year's warning? No, I don't. No. Okay, because I believe at the end of if they are most town meetings. You have the official warning, which is the town's business, the budget, etc. Then at the end of that, you have the articles or the, the items which are not part of the official budget and which still need to be reviewed and passed. And at the end of those, you have the non-binding resolutions. But I believe they're all published in the same document. Yeah, it's, artic it's, it's, it's Article 11 anyways, and there's only Article 12, which is be to transact any other business which may legally come before the town. So if we left it as Article 11, with your wording, it would still be there. I think, I think that makes sense. Just got to put the right, you've got the right wording. Well, what I wrote, Gary, again, do the citizens of Newfane wish to keep two recycling bins on town property? That's what you said before, right? That's good. Yeah, that's general. And then we can have a discussion which ensues, which goes into why are you asking for this. Right. And we, we can then get into the details as we know them at that point in time. So we can keep this one that says uh, warning with recycling bins in it, and we'll just add that wording into it, and we should be good. Actually, we're, we're not going to even use this wording. We're right. going we're to, going to have just this we're going to strike article out this 11 and, and go with this one. Right. Pardon? And sign this one. Because it said you put it on at town meeting. Yes, but we, uh, 
this is not, uh, this doesn't have it in it. Here, look. No, this one is just no, supposed I to. I know, but oh, here, we're, instead of doing this, we right. can write see, Article this 11. This doesn't even have something that I can strike out. Right, no, but we could put her, Mary's thing in there. Have she had to type that up? Yep. Are people able to come here tomorrow? She has to type up and sign this morning if we do the rest of it tonight. No. And she's going to uh, PDF it to it. me for my signature. So if I'm we want to give it, it to her in the morning, to, morning to uh, figure out what the language should be, that would work. All right. Why can't we just leave this on her desk? She wants it signed so she get it. She so get it we'll sign it. With that, with all the rest of it, plus right. that word, plus that word. Yes. All right. Sounds so, good. is okay. that what we're doing? Everybody's good with that. Yep. All right. Let's go over these from one to whatever. We, we don't need a motion for that. Do we? Uh, you can if you want. No, I don't know. If you no, want sign. Need one. Anyway, let's get let's check out let's read the rest of it before we sign that because we don't even know what we're signing yet. Okay. Well, we can sign. Normally, it what we do is read do down it. through these just to make sure that the wording's right. Are you are you, you done with us? us? Do you need to stay I think we're good. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you so much for staying here so long, you Okay, this is what's going to transpire here. This is what we're going to sign. When we get to Article 11, you're going to we're going to put yours in there. But warning <coughs> for the 2017 annual New Fane Town Meeting, Williamsville Hall, March 7th, 2017. The legal voters of the town of New Fane, Vermont, are hereby notified and warned that the pursuant that pursuant to Title 17 VSA Section 2655, they are to meet at the Williamsville Hall in Williamsville, Vermont on Tuesday, March 7, 2017 at 9 a.m. to act upon the following articles. Below. One, yeah, below. One, shall the voters of the town of New Fane elect all New Fane town officers as required by law for the ensuing year, voting on this article to be by Australian ballot from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Then there's the the list of what they are. Article 2. Shall the voters of the town of New Fane authorize the treasurer to collect current taxes pursuant to 32 VSA 4791. Article 3. Shall the voters of the town of New Fane pay taxes for the exist uh, for the ensuing year on a quarterly basis due on March 15th, oh, no, wait no, a minute, due on, the on 15th of August, October, January, and April. The late charge for the interest being at, a, at the maximum rate Legal. legal rate of 1% per month for the current fiscal year and 1.5% per month for each month thereafter until paid. Article 4. Shall the, the voters of the town of Newfane authorize a select board to sell or otherwise convey property acquired through tax sale proceedings. Article 5. Shall the voters of the town of Newfane raise an appropriate sum of $5,178 for Southern Vermont Economic Development Strategies, better known as CIVEDS, not in the budget. So that would be added to the budget if it be passed. Article 6. Shall the voters of the town of New Fane vote to authorize capital fund expenditures in the amount of $381,638 as proposed in the capital needs plan for fiscal year 2018? Article 7. Shall the voters of the town of New Fane authorize the select board to raise the amount of $206,400 for the fiscal year 2018 for capital needs? Article 8. Shall the voters of the town of New Fane authorize the select board to borrow up to $30,000 for the fiscal year 2018 capital needs? Article 9. Shall the voters of the town of New Fane vote to raise the amount of $100,000 to be added to capital reserve fund to be solely dedicated for future capital needs? Article 10, shall the voters of the town of New Fane authorize the town and highway operational expenditures in the amount of $1,378,908. Article 11, that would be you. Oh, um, do the citizens of New Fane wish to keep two recycling bins on town property? Non-binding somewhere, we gotta put non-binding somewhere. Where do you put it? Probably right after Article 11, it should say non-binding, and then the liter then the wording underneath it, I guess. Oh, okay. I'm no expert in I this. I don't so. say it's about, so about look into the possibility of keeping two, the possible look into the possibility of an expense of two bins on the town of property. The possi do the citizens 
Well, you're looking into the city. I mean, you don't want to just say you won't wish to keep it. I mean, you got to kind of have it. They're going to have to know what they're going to come up with a figure later on. But so isn't this non-binding? It should be the voters. Right. Okay. The voters of the town of Newfane. To the voters of the town of Newfane. That's consistent with all the other language. Right. Shall thing. wish to keep two recycling bins on town property? Yeah, we, it's non-binding, so we can put it that way. Okay. Um, yeah. You go to that. Everybody go to that, Morty. Should I write that down? Where? Well, you come in to see Shannon tomorrow. And I don't want to say wish. I don't want to say look into the possibility of keeping two recycle bins. Wish all you want, but if it isn't feasible, I mean, I'd say look into the possibility. But it, they're going to they're going to inspect it. But it's non-binding. Yeah, I know it's non-binding. Why don't we write still. this down now? <laughs> and then sign it and just leave it on Shannon's desk. It's easy for you to say. Why? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right. Do we want to dress that up some more? Or do we want to have Shannon just dress that up? We got the basics of it, yeah, right? That's fine. Fine. Were you going to sign this one? Yeah. Well, and then I she's going to change she it. She will change it. Yeah, I can. Article 12 to transact any other business that may legally come before the town, then we sign it. Are we good to that? Yeah. <laughs> yes. I think after the four years of being on the board, I've kind of looked at I, we, or can or can't. <laughs> Ken, or, uh, yeah, Ken. Common Gary sense. made a motion to. common sense. <laughs> Gary made a motion to approve this and sign it. Is there a second? Second. second. So the motion has been made and seconded to approve the articles as presented, except for Article 11, which we'll have Shannon rewrite, um, and then we'll sign this. As to which we made a public record of the changes. Right. Does everybody go to that? Yeah. yeah. All, those, been, uh, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed or abstaining? The eyes have it. We'll sign this one and then we'll just have Shannon do her little. Here, you know what? We'll put a uh, post-it. What are we this. calling this? Article 11? Article 11. So, do we know who pulled papers for the select board position? The only one I've heard of is Christopher Williams. Now, okay. Marion did, right? Yeah. Mike, did you turn yours in? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, the only one that's changing is me. Lucky you. You're getting rid of me. Well, that's not going to be fun. No. Be I fun for not. me. It will be. <laughs> we'll have fun uh, from afar. Okay. Now, okay. so I've gotten through that. I'm going to move on to the budget. This is a marathon. February 20th. What's that? Next time is uh, February 20th meeting. Next meeting is February 6th. Yeah, but the agenda I've got has a discussion or new business for February 20th, 2017. Yes, I have no idea what that is about. Uh, Do you? February 20th is a holiday. Oh. If the board wants to still have the meeting. She has no problem coming down for the meeting. It's it's uh, President's Day. She, she just wanted to know if you guys still wanted to have it on February 20th or not. I don't have any problem with it. I, I'm, I, I don't think I'm going anywhere. I, I think I just keep it with this. Yeah, I have no problem with it. Gary, you got a problem with it? Or? No, I don't mind. Marion? No. So we'll tell Shannon to stay with the February 20th. Our town office is open that day? No. We can, we can have a key. What the heck was that? I have no idea. Well, it's what close to town meeting, and we have so much work we've got to do. Uh, right. I don't have a problem with it. No, I think that's good. Let's keep it. Okay, the next order of biz uniz would be Conservation Commission appointment. And so, I have it here Where something. It? Conservation Commission of New Fane would like to request that George Friend be appointed to the member of the commission. He was told, he has told us that he is willing to serve, and we all agree he would be an excellent addition. Respectfully submitted, Sylvia Kinney, Chair, Newfane Conservation Commission. 
Can I have a motion? Make a motion to appoint George Friend. Motion has been made and seconded to appoint George Friend to the Conservation Commission of the Town of Newfane. Is there any other discussion? I worked with George on the Planning Commission. He did a great job. Yep, he is a good guy. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed or abstaining? The ayes have it. Okay. Now. I think that's it. No. <laughs> no? Don't you wish? Oh my goodness. We have a final budget We're to sign. And closed is the final, final, final. I'm not ready. I'm not. I'm reading this as she has it. And closed is the final, final, final budget. I just need a motion to approve expenditures as presented and another to approve revenue as presented. There are no changes from last budget meeting, just cleaned up the copy. So, is anybody willing to make a motion to approve the budget? I'll make a motion to approve the bu budget as. Right here. Yeah. Approve expenditures as presented. And another motion and to another, approve well, revenue. Two so, we're doing the expenditures. And we have a motion on the floor to approve the expenditures for the FY 2016, FY 2018 expenses. Is there any other, and it's been seconded, is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed or abstaining? Ayes have it. Now we have another motion that Carol would like to make for revenues. Um, let's see, where are we? I'd like to. Uh, Need a mo okay. I'd like to approve. I think we should approve the um, revenues budget. Re uh, re revenues budget as presented. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the revenues budget as presented for 2016 through 2018 revenues. 16. Was said. Uh, well, that's just the budget form. Yeah. We're only approving the last column. The right, so it's the right. budget 2018. Okay. Okay. Everybody do that? Yep. Yes. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed or abstaining? Done deal. Okay, now we are moving on to what do I have? Nothing. Pay, Pay orders. orders. Did I miss anything? Do you guys Please see where I missed anything? Uh, Before we get on to pay orders? No. No. We've been through a whole bunch of stuff here. Two separate warnings for the article regarding recycling. And with that, we did that. We talked about the holiday appointment for the commission. We did that. Old business, we discussed that over and over again. 2018 budget, we just approved. Pay orders. I make a motion that Carol and Mary do pay orders. No, there's nothing to do. Well, no. you should but accept it then. It's oh, just. Have to sign it. Yeah, you have to sign it. This would have been the time to accept it. <laughs> We're not accepting something that we're being forced to accept. Okay, basically. Thank you very much. Thanks. Basically, Thank all you, you guys got to do is sign. The <laughs>